All right, so let's try that again. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the show. Can you hear us? That's it. We were on mute. Apologies. And uh, it's been a while. Do you know what? We uh, we didn't do the show on Friday. It's almost like we've forgotten how, how the system works. So <laughs> welcome to everyone. There you go. So people saying they can't hear us. Can you hear us now? Let us know. There we go. <laughs> Better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apologies. Sorry. We had you on mute. We were just testing just to make sure you were actually paying attention. <laughs> So welcome to the show. Happy Tuesday. It's the 2nd of March. 2nd of March? Yeah, already. So we, I'm doing all right. I'm I'm actually really excited about tonight's show. But before we do that, we'll, we'll do some hellos and stuff. And yeah, I'm, I'm actually quite pumped this week because I've been off the back of Sooty FM and off the back of, you know, some of our shows right at the start of the year and a new talk show talking about mental well-being and uh, physical well-being and all those good things i've been trying to eat well we've both been trying to eat well train you know do our insanity workouts and stuff and yesterday was my two months so i've been training now and eating well and doing everything for two months and i'm actually quite pleased with my results so i'm i'm on a bit of a high so far and uh 2021's kicked off well for me so yeah how about you how's your training going yeah, not not as good as his. <laughs> I um I only trained twice last week. I was tired, fed up, just not in the mood for training. So I trained twice last week, but I trained today, and I've got another session to do later on tonight. There we go. That's it. Right. So a few more hellos. Welcome to Maria. Welcome to Andrea. Good morning to Nick and Australia. Welcome, feel it. Welcome to Angie as well, to Nikki. Happy Tuesday. That's right. Apparently, we're both looking good. Are you there? High five. Yes. Yeah, we're trying to eat well, slim down, just, you know, just that whole physical, mental well-being. So uh, I think it's going quite well. Welcome to Gula. Welcome to the show, everyone. Also, welcome to Maria and Barbara and Famula. Because we did say hi to you before, but we were on <laughs> mute. So um, I'm hoping you guys can all hear us now. Oh, and Georgina Dupree, hi. <laughs> right, so we're, um, well, we'll see, as always, welcome Louis as well from Croydon. Welcome to the show. So we've got a really interesting show lined up for you tonight. We've got, we've actually got two guests coming on to the show tonight. So we'll talk about that in a little bit as well and we'll, we'll bring our first guest on mr george hill the seal on shortly so tonight's show if you haven't seen the post already we're talking about business and you know how to stay positive how to be successful how to obviously 
manage and maintain business throughout obviously lockdown fingers crossed we're coming towards the end of it here in the uk so gonna hopefully share some hints and tips as to how to really engage well with your clients build clients grow your business you know post lockdown as well so you know please do stay tuned we will be going through lots of hints and tips and of course for any of you out there that are either running your own business whether you're new to that whether you've just set up a brand new business during lockdown or whether you are experienced in business for years i'm sure i actually put money down that you'll take something out of tonight's show take it something away from our experts and you know hopefully be able to put some of those hints and tips into practice for your own business i'm definitely looking forward to taking some hints and tips forward for me and for for blonde we both now got businesses so high five you yeah but also because of lockdown and being at home it might give us a new lease of life really into the focus of this year's work and how we move forward um as a business so i guess i'm quite looking forward to um seeing the tips or hearing the tips shall i say and finding out what we can do differently coming out of lockdown um to promote our businesses i guess yeah definitely so you can see it scrolling across the <clears throat> bottom of the screen now as well so if you are new to the city fm show if you're watching on the youtube channel then don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss any of our future shows, communications, um, loads more planned for the coming weeks and months here on Suit FM. So make sure you do that. Um, a few more hellos. Welcome to Maria uh, Antonio. Welcome to Elena. We've got Penny with us as well. Hi, Penny. And we've got Mike as well. Galispera. Welcome, everybody. So we have got Trudy as well from New Styles. Um, I think she's put up a, a picture, which we can't quite see. But welcome to Trudy as well. So... Without further ado, I think it's time to bring on our guest speaker. So tonight we've got George Theodosil, who is a TEDx speaker. He's going to share his insights on how to build strong connections in life and in business. Um, I'm going to let him tell his story as well. Before we go into all of the uh, hints and tips, going to kind of get to know who he is, what he does, almost a little bit like... Um, Oh, what was it called? Still a black show. Um, surprise, surprise. The blind date one. Blind date. There we go. Blind date. <laughs> Guest number one. What's your name and where'd you come from? <laughs> so, well, welcoming uh, George, who's just moved away from me so far. George, are you there? <laughs> he's he's oh, just yeah, so out. Leave him alone. <laughs> It's not I'm getting easy. comfortable. I'm getting comfortable. getting comfortable. That's it. Welcome. Sorry, mate. I was a perfect, perfect. Um, uh, timing there from me just to uh, bring you onto screen. So uh, welcome to the show. I've been sitting here waiting for you, and that's the time that you decide to put me on. <laughs> it's well, a listen, typical city to be well, fair. So it. you know, listen, it, listen. We have lots of jokes and laughter and banter on on City FM, as well as obviously the you know the educational and obviously the business stuff we're going to go through today. So obviously, you know, how are you? How are you, Maria and family? Everyone all right? Keeping okay through lockdown? Yeah, all good, mate. All good. Um, listen, let's be honest. Let's be real. Not without challenges. Um, it's been very difficult, but yeah, we're good, man. We're breathing. We're fighting. We've got opportunities. We're good. That's it. Good. Well, great to hear. Um, so I know who you are. Obviously, we've been friends and, you know, uh, what have you for quite a while and seen you at a few events and, you know, some of your talks and everything else. So Give us a bit of an intro for those listeners that are tuned in now who maybe don't know who you are, other than the, the picture and the post that we've been posting up. Who are you? What's your name? Where do you come from? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> I'm George. I'm from North London with an F on the end. Um, I'm married. I've got two kids. Um, now I'm, I'm, I'm all good, mate. Um, so it's great to be here, uh, first and foremost. Um, what can I say? Uh, my name's George. Um, I run a consultancy business in North London. Uh, in Enfield, we've got a training centre and office there. We specifically work with trades and construction business owners to help them do three things, really. Number one is fill the diary with the kind of work that they want. Number two is to grow an outstanding team so that they can come off the tools. And number three, we help them grow and scale a business that is not dependent on them so they can sell it one day if they want and ultimately spend more time doing the things that they want with their family and you know, focusing on what's most important. Um, 
like you said, I'm a, I had an opportunity to be a TEDx speaker um, in February 2020, so a month before we went into lockdown. So I grabbed that opportunity straight away. Um, I've also been fortunate enough to speak at various um, fairly large, definitely large for me in my experience, uh, business conferences with like 500 plus people in the audience. I'm speaking at an event, which I'm super excited about in April. Um, it's going to be online and it's going to be in one of these studios in Watford with like screens everywhere, about a thousand plus people. I'm super excited. But just to be able to connect with people like you and, you know, have conversations, build connections, build relationships and help each other out. Because now more than ever, like, we need to stick together, man. Like, yeah. it's pretty crazy out there. Yeah. Definitely. It's why we've all got the blinds shut as well. Not just because it's night time, because <laughs> it's pretty crazy out there. It's dangerous, um, man. I've got the blind shut. <laughs> That's it. So I'm just going to pick up on, obviously, something you said about being a, a TEDx speaker. So for those that don't know about TEDx or what it is, I mean, I use these videos and have done through uh, my work career over the last what, 10, 15 years. And they're, they're fantastic kind of live talks from professionals in all sorts of different industries. Um, but for those that don't know what TEDx is, do you want to give a bit of an introduction as to what it is and how you got involved in that? Yeah, so um, TEDx, uh, in terms of what it is, is a concept that was set up where people share ideas, um, share experiences, share share advice, and um, so that the people that watch it and consume it um, can avoid a problem or uh, reach a certain goal or, or be better informed and um, it's just taken the world by storm there's god knows how many of these uh, people get invited you can't just speak I had an opportunity to apply um, so I applied and it was quite a strict um, process um, quite broadening actually um, really? there was three stages of interviews they absolutely grilled me they destroyed me but I just kept going I was just like look I feel like I've got something that could be beneficial I feel like I've got something that I need to share and um, I just kept with the process and, you know, I was one of the lucky guys that, um, that got selected. Um, and the, the, the topic of conversation was connections. So they basically said, look, that's the topic. You go where you want with it. So um, my, my thing, my presentation um, was very much about building strong connections in life and in business. Because as far as I'm concerned, when we've got strong connections, it makes relationships in life a lot better, a lot easier. When we have strong connections in business, it makes doing business with people a lot easier as well. Definitely. Um, so just, I suppose, the last question kind of about you and, and what have you is, you know, how did you get involved in this? You know, being a business consultant, you know, what kind of, what kind of road or avenue led you to, to doing this? Any kind of specific experiences that you've been through or previous roles, jobs? How do you get into what you're doing? Yeah, great question. Um, I absolutely did not plan to do this. Um, <laughs> it kind of just like happened, a couple of things. I fell into a couple of things. And then before you know it, like here we are. But in terms of the actual chronology of events, um, I didn't know where I wanted to be. I just I always saw myself growing up in North London. I wanted to work in the city. I wanted to be a banker. I wanted to work in like the square mile and experience that life and wear nice suits every day. That was like, that was my thing. And um, I wasn't very academic at school. Um, got pretty shitty grades. Uh, hope that word's all right. Um, and then uh, I helped a mate out who had a fireworks business and kind of just like organized his business. And then his father-in-law saw me help him and said, look, I've got an accountancy and insolvency office. And there's a girl who's going on maternity leave. We've got a space. Um, at the time, I had to go back and resit an exam uh, at university because I wasn't very academic. So I had like this six month period of like no man's land. And all of my mates that um, got like their degrees and graduated, they were struggling to find a job because they had no experience. So I was being offered a job. It was almost like back to front. So I got offered the job to work at this insolvency place. Um, if you don't know what that is, because I didn't know what it was. I, I took the job. And I didn't even know what the word meant. Uh, but basically, insolvency is the industry that helps people avoid or deal with bankruptcy and liquidation and stuff like that. So um started working there on Monday, the 16th of January, 2006. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and within six months, I, I started to really enjoy it. Like I was learning about all these different businesses and different industries and like what made them tick, what made them successful, what made them um, like rack up loads of debt. And then in July 2006, and this is where everything changed, I experienced someone commit suicide because of money problems in their business. And that just freaked me out. I thought, you know, like, oh, yeah. Tough. 
I thought, you know, of all the horrible things that could happen in the world, you know, like without giving graphic examples of, of what could push someone to feel that low and that alone, I just thought, surely not money. Like, do you know what I mean? And it just didn't really sit right with me. And, and so from that day, I decided that this was the industry for me. I was going to go all in. And I just became like super sensitive to like listening to what people would say and how they would behave and just to try and like preempt if someone was having like those kind of suicidal thoughts because of problems in their business. And so I just went all in on that. And then luckily, it's not the kind of thing that you come across all the time. But what I was coming across on a very, very regular basis was people having money problems in business, hence coming to the insolvency firm that I work for. And then they were falling into depression. And um, a lot of these guys were getting divorced and there was like arguments, um, you know, behind closed doors about money and people feeling down about money and, and low self-worth, all that kind of stuff. And this carried on for a few years. And then like, I, I just kept thinking to myself, like, if only these guys would come to me sooner rather than shit, there's a bailiff outside yeah. or, or like I've got to be at court next week. What do I do? Or this person owes me money. They've gone bust. Yeah. I can't pay my bills, all that kind of stuff. But then I thought, why would they come and speak to an insolvency person unless they had serious debt problems? And so I started posting seven, seven and a half, maybe eight years ago. I started posting content on Facebook, just short videos and on YouTube, just saying, look, like, here's some reasons why businesses go bust. If you did the opposite of that, you've got a good foundation to be successful. And by being successful yeah. means that you're more profitable, you've got better cash flow, and you're further away from debt problems. Um, and then slowly, slowly, by pumping out this content, I used to get a lot of abuse as well, people taking the piss out of me and, and just whatever. Um, yeah. But that's fine. That's that's part of it, a part of the process. And then uh, within three months of me posting these videos, someone reached out to me and said, look, I've been watching your stuff. Um, I did what you said in the video last Tuesday. It worked quite well. I've got some questions and some challenges in business. I kind of feel like you're the only person I can, that can help me. You know, like, how can you help me? And I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't have a service to offer. And she was like, well, if I paid you a couple hundred pounds a month and we just jumped on a Skype, she's based in Moscow, born and raised in Winchmore Hill, moved to Moscow, and she's still a client now, um, eight years on. Um, and she was like, you know, I'll just ask you loads of questions. I'll tell you what's going on in the business. You give me advice, you know, and we'll go from there. So we did three months of that, and she made £16,100 more in those three months than she did in the previous 12 months. She gave me a testimonial. I put it on Facebook. That attracted some interest. I got three new clients from that followed the same process. They got good results in their business. They gave me testimonials and reviews. I posted them. And then before you know it, like it started to build and build and build. And, you know, I was pumping out a lot more content and then I was getting a bit more attention and I got some opportunities to speak and, you know, some small places here and there. And before you know it, you know, I, I now I'm like, just, I don't know how it happened, but for someone who hated public speaking, <laughs> uh, now we speak in, you know, places where, there's like 500 to 1,000 people in the audience. I'm speaking with some incredible names that I've been following for years, like events that I've, I've been like honoured to speak at, like Gary Vaynerchuk spoken at these events and Grant Cardone and David Goggins and Lewis Howes and Neil Patel, who like Apple and Microsoft go to this guy for marketing advice about trends in the future. And I've met the guy and like he's proper quiet and humble and just like it's just incredible when you get out of your own way and think, yeah. like, I hate public speaking. Like the worst thing I can think of is getting on a video and, you know, all my insecurities will be out there for everyone. And then before you know it, like someone connects with you and someone that I've got a client that came and see me today. Um, and the only reason that he's a client now is because he saw a video around about, I don't know, six or seven months ago. But it's a video that I posted four years ago. And in that video, it was nothing to do with business. I was literally sharing the example of when I started posting videos, how people used to take the piss out of me and say, like, you know, you're unprofessional, you're, you're shooting videos in Magronis or Beach in Cyprus, you're yeah, wearing a yeah. football vest, what have you ever achieved? Why should anyone take any advice from you? And I was sharing that, and that's the video that got his attention and said that yeah. he's experienced something similar, and that's why he reached out to me. Now he's a client, and now he's happy, and he's getting good results in his business. So that's been the journey. Um, it's just it's been a, it's been a, an interesting one, a crazy one. I don't know. I didn't plan to be here. But yeah. <laughs> That's it. The same we didn't plan to be here tonight. I collared you into uh, coming on to suit your fam and sharing your experiences and your expertise as well. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I had to cancel my hair appointment today. I was going to get my hair perm. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Me too. <laughs> I mean, one thing I 
took away from what you were saying is word of mouth and you giving the, the companies the support that they need for um just anything in general really like anything that they have concerns about you're there to sort of guide them and sort of steer them in the right way and take the pressure off like you were saying them feeling really uncomfortable and going some have gone down really bad roads um you're that you're the middleman to sort of stop that from happening which is great which we're gonna which we're gonna delve into um and get obviously your your expert advice but just um just conscious of a couple of comments as well so mike says is tedx like the bni thing um it's not um i mean i don't know if you, you might class it as a bni for like the super educated and the super successful um but <clears throat> what we can do on cfm we'll, we'll share uh, george if you've got a link to your tedx um speech then we can obviously post that one um but there's loads of you know if you search tedx on um either youtube or on the internet you'll find loads of things and then on tedx you can then search for certain things there's all sorts of things of you know whether it be um confidence leadership business obviously george you better tell us some of the other you know speakers you've heard so it's not quite like the north london bni groups of businesses that get together and share clients or share referrals and that kind of stuff which i think mike's talking about it's more a as george said it's you know you have it's an exclusive club kind of thing to you have to be invited to come along and speak but it's almost like a you know you're presenting to a group of 500 people plus but then obviously it's saved and shared on youtube so then it goes out to hundreds of thousands maybe even millions of, of viewers so um yeah so have i captured that yeah, yeah, no, great, great question and great response. Um, if I can just add a little something, uh, Michael, it's um, B&I, and I'm also a B&I member as well, and that's where I first started public speaking, actually, um, just in that environment. But B&I is essentially a, it's a, ref, it's a networking organisation with a view to helping people pass referrals to each other, whereas TEDx is... Their slogan is um, ideas worth sharing. So what they've done is they created these TED talks and these TEDx talks where they get like people like Tony Robbins and Oprah Winfrey and um, like all these types of people um, to share some insight in a particular subject or particular area. And then they've essentially like licensed out to certain people that have got to meet certain criteria. So universities, schools, organizations, prisons, even as long as they meet certain criteria, they can invite people to come and do a TEDx talk on a particular subject. And then they push that out there. It's almost like you've got to reach a certain um, level before you get there. I mean, unless like you're me and you've just like snuck in. Yeah. The but generally speaking, um, <laughs> get invited to these things, you've got to apply. But they're, they're, they're kind of similar, but they're also very, very different, um, if that makes sense as well. Perfect. Thank you. So I've got a couple of questions. Again, just another couple of comments. Uh, so Nick in Australia says, um, George T, speaking as a banker from Dan Under. Good day, mate. I agree. Small business owners in particular isolate in challenging times when, in fact, the opposite should be done. Um, and he follows that up with the key is to keep seeking advice in good times, too, to sustain growth. So absolutely. your thoughts on, on what Nick said there as well? Yeah, absolutely, mate. Um, nice to have you here from Australia and you've got the Greek flag there as well. Um, absolutely. it For me, you've got to be around people that are pushing themselves, aspiring to reach greater heights. Because let's be honest, like, again, just to coin some stuff from people that I follow and I attend events around the world, like Grant Cardone, um, you know, who I'm a big fan of. And you look at some of the things that he says, because um, they're directly relevant to this, is um, first and foremost, you, you need to get people's attention because if if people don't know about you or not enough people know about you then you're only going to go so far in terms of adding value to people's lives through your products and services so you need to get people's attention and rather than sinking back and retracting especially in difficult times the lockdown um like brexit and recession all that stuff you've got to do more you've got to be more creative you've got to have stronger connections you've got to reach out to more people you've got to be more consistent and so just having that in mind, um, even if your, your industry has been shut down, there's still stuff that you can do. And we'll get onto that and we'll talk about, you know, the, the new business that um, DJ Blondie has set up. I can see there. Um, but just, there's, there's a lot of stuff that you can do, even if you are in the events industry or the hospitality industry, to keep you going, keeping you in the front of mind of your, your clients and your ideal clients. So absolutely agree. We need to be doing more and getting ourselves out there. Definitely. So. 
as you've uh, you know, we've, we've already touched on some of the um, stuff that George has done. We've actually got one of George's clients who's going to come on later on in the show as well, just as a, I suppose a bit of a testimonial for some of the work that George has done with him. But we'll, we'll obviously come on to that in a little bit later on. But if you've got any questions throughout the show, whether it's you know something specific we're talking about now, now directly, or if there's anything about business in general you want to ask either us here at City FM or, or George, then please get them in the comments either on Facebook or on YouTube, whichever platform you're listening in on. And we obviously we will get to them um, in between uh, some of the questions we'll put to George and some of his um, content as well. So get them in the comments for us. So I'm going to kick it off, George, with this first one. Again, kind of, I suppose, appropriate given the timing. So fingers crossed, you know, it feels like we're coming to the end of lockdown here in the UK. Hopefully, you know, by the end of June, all being well, most businesses can reopen again and start trading properly, um, et cetera, et cetera. So what, what would be your, I say, I say top three tips or what would be your kind of top tips for any businesses that obviously already exist in and obviously looking to re-engage with clients now as we're hopefully approaching the end of lockdown? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go into this in a bit more detail, more structured detail when I just share some content. I've got like five um, points that I want people to take away from this, but um, we'll touch on the answer now on this one. And look, like when I got just circling back to the TEDx thing, when I got invited to do this and, and they said, like, you're in the subject's connections, like it really, it really hit home with me. And I felt like I wanted to take that word on to be like my my word, but my number one most important word for 2020. I've actually kept it going for now that we're in 2021. And and so going back to like what people and business owners could have done um, or should be doing now to come out of lockdown in their industries, even better. And then just connections. And what I mean by that is like stay connected to your clients, stay connected to your ideal clients, stay connected to your followers and and people that you're you're in that sort of um, synergy within business and and some of what I'm going to share is like as basic as you like but oftentimes not saying you if you're watching but oftentimes we all forget to do the things that are a the most basic b the easiest and c things that we've got success with in the past sometimes we forget to keep doing these things so what I would say in terms of something tangible that you can be doing is like whenever you're able to come out of lockdown for your industry and start doing business properly again, start connecting with people right now. Don't just send messages, send voice notes. Don't just do voice notes, pick up the phone and call and let the conversation go something like this. How are you doing? Like, how are you and your family? I hope you and your family are safe and well. How's the lockdown been for you? Like, what do you need? Like, is there anything I can do for you? Way before you even start talking about business because there's an incredible um, quote from a lady called uh, Maya Angelou. Um, like a lot of her quotes are incredible, but the one that stuck with me was, and this was so apt during what we've experienced in the last 12 months, which is people will forget what you said. They'll remember half of what you did, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. So pick up the phone and just check in with people and say, how are you doing? Like, how's family? Have you had the injection yet? Are you going to have it? How are you getting on? Is there anything you need from me? Do you need me to pick up some shopping and deliver it? Like, how are you getting on? Because... I'm telling you, just do that. And that, that could literally take 20 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute. That is a phenomenal foundation to then have a conversation about business because anyone with you know any kind of like social skills is going to turn around to you and say, how are you doing? Thanks for asking. How are you doing? How's business? Have you been able to trade? When are you reopening? I'm glad you called, actually. Can I book you in for you know these sweet treats for this event? Can we book you in for that? Do you know what I mean? Like... If you connect with yeah, people, yeah. like business just becomes a lot easier. And that just seems so basic and so simple. But if we're all honest with each other, could we have done more of that? Could we have made more of these phone calls? Could we have just checked in with people? You know, I've got a situation now where, and I'll, I'll go into this in a bit more detail, but like most of the time I'm up at five in the morning. I, I stumble downstairs. I make a coffee about half five, quarter to six, six o'clock. I'm banging out voice notes to people that follow me on Instagram. How are you doing? Like, thank you so much for connecting with me. I hope you and your family are safe and well. I hope your business is in a healthy position. More importantly, because I've been focusing a lot on mental health, I hope that your, your, your mental health is in a healthy place. And by the way, I just want to take the opportunity to say thank you so much for following me on Instagram. Like, I really appreciate it. It doesn't go unnoticed. 
It takes me 20 seconds. I bang yeah. out 20 to 50 of those like in 15 minutes every morning. Like most people ignore me, I'll tell you straight. But I've got a whole load of people that are messaging me back. They say they've been following me for a while. Now I've just instigated a conversation. Like at the end of the day, like I believe in what I do. So I need to connect with more people so that I can add more value. So just connecting on them as a human to human level first, like you're going to end up doing business with more people. Yeah, that's a that's a great that's a great show. Um, I mean, I feel like we've done that in general. Us as um, a couple, like creating City FM, we um, obviously it just started off with a random Wednesday night. Let's just mix on the decks. Let's have a little live session, and it took off from there. But we have had it with some of our brides and um, our wedding couples where obviously some of them have got married, even though their big weddings now move for two years time and other um, couples have just like moved their dates and stuff like that. But we've stayed in contact with pretty much all yep. of our our clients yep. just to sort of see how they are, how yep. um, they're surviving. But yep. City FM has done that for us all over the world with new people too. So yeah. for yeah. us, that's the wedding DJ side of things, but. Yeah, I mean, again, just again, bringing it, I suppose, home, making it real, you know, all our clients, all our couples, um, obviously most parties and stuff that were booked last year were obviously canceled because they didn't want to move their birthday or their christening necessarily. But most of the weddings have either moved to later on this year, fingers crossed they can just still go ahead or on to, you know, 2022. But it's about, you know, throughout it all, we i was i took the proactive approach of reaching out to my clients and saying to them you know how has the news or the latest announcement affected you hope you guys are okay any news from the venue rather than kind of being the, the say the dj that hides and waits for the client to chase them up or find out what their options are and i found that actually being that proactive person and having that proactive approach throughout all of it all my clients are still very much engaged with them me they're still very much now very much looking forward to a new date for their wedding you know 2021 or 2022 and yeah. we kept the buzz about their wedding going naturally there's disappointment that they had to you know call it off or you know postpone it not call it off postpone it but yeah like you say it's that it's that whole connection piece but and yeah sooty fm speaks for itself that you know a year well nearly a year you know in a couple of weeks time it's a year we've been doing city fm and we and it's grown from just a random you know night in the garage to we've redone the studio we've now got a talk show we've got guests and experts coming on the show so you know it, and it's building that connection and connectivity well, we're trying to, to find different ways to help people because obviously our industry is shut it's still shut until june i think the 21st if we're lucky fingers crossed i'm praying for that date that we do open up but as far as we're aware we're still shut down for another six months of um this year so for us it's also trying to make sure that like we said people are okay mental health making sure that you know we can just support them even if it's like this for a screen because sure. i know from personal experience sometimes that just pick up say some feelings out to a friend makes such a difference whether that's work whether that's personal with anything some extra advice always helps yeah of course 100 percent. and look like it, it hasn't gone unnoticed i've seen what you guys have been doing which is why you know i've stayed in touch and you know I, i've come on here when you guys um you know were, were gracious enough to invite me on and it doesn't go unnoticed that you guys are putting this kind of stuff on and you know i think you guys have done exactly what you should have done um and you know I, i've given people some advice over the um the last you know 10 11 months that are in the event space and you know, you guys have been shut down. So it's very different to a lot of other industries that have been able to trade. But it just goes to show going back to connections and and you guys doing stuff without expecting anything in return and adding value. And in the day, if, if me and my fiance were going to get married in 2020 and we're absolutely devastated because, you know, we can't have the wedding that we've dreamed of. Um, and then you guys turn around knowing the landscape. And I'm saying this from experience because I've spoken to so many people in your space in the last 10, 11 months, where there are a lot of very rigid, um, like non-flexible um, events suppliers that are saying, no, nope, 
um, you're going to lose your deposit and you need to pay another deposit to book another date and you've only got one date available, then you guys turn around and say, look, we appreciate the market. You're not going to lose a deposit. We're going to transfer it. We're going to keep three dates open for you, not one. Um, and because you're a DJ, you can turn around and do some added value because I want to circle back to adding as much value on this session as possible. And one of the other things that I recommend and I advise for my clients is what I call timeline turnover. So what I mean by that is look at the timeline of your ideal clients in normal circumstances and in pretty messed up circumstances like the last 10, 11 months. So in your circumstances, you've got a list of clients that aren't going to get married or they're not going to have the dream wedding that they planned. You're a DJ as well. So you can, you've, you've probably already, if you haven't, you could very easily gather like their top 10 tracks that they wanted for their wedding um, or that like really makes them feel like part of them as a couple, like their 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 best tracks as a couple. And you do a compilation CD with a handwritten card that you send it to them and say, look, we're thinking of you on your day. And, you know, do like something extra that makes them come out of that thinking, you know what? Like, it's a great show. I like that. Like, like, are, are they are they more likely or less likely to keep the booking with you if you do that? Are they more likely or less likely to give you a video testimonial if you do that? Are they more likely or less likely to rave about you to their friends if you do that? It's just the little things that go a long way, you know? Yeah. Well, for us, I mean, personally, I can't comment on other suppliers because we don't know what situation people are in financially or anything like that. We worked it out how we could manage as a family and as a business so that we wouldn't go under obviously we have children to feed but how we could look after our clients so if we could move their date great then obviously no deposit refunded but if they had no other option we refunded um a, quite a few deposits but at the end of the day christenings will come up birthdays will come up other events will come up and hopefully how you make them feel, like because you we've made them feel like you know we're not i i i don't want to we were there be, to support them yeah we were there to support them i don't want to tarnish anyone else because obviously we don't know their situation but i had a couple that were going through it and they lost a hell of a lot of money um from their rubber suppliers and i just remember sitting there thinking if I'd planned my day, and let's be real, Greek weddings are not cheap, <laughs> and I'd spent all that money, and then I'd lost half of it, it would just it It'd would throw you, eat, devastate oh, you. Yeah, it would eat away at you. So for us yeah. as a company, we did the best we yeah. could. But yeah, I mean, yeah. it is about how you make people feel, and I always say that good service will come back. You, you might go to a cafe and it'd be rubbish food, but actually the service is amazing. You'd come back to the cafe because the service is great. Yeah. So just, just a few more comments, a um, couple of hellos. Hi to Olivia out in Australia as well. Welcome. Um, Hi, Australians yeah. up. Welcome to Alexia also out in Australia. Um, she says, my top tip, it's important to have a contingency plan and cash reserves to cover expenses. Um, George, your thoughts on... On that point, it's not necessarily a question, but your thoughts on her, her tip? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Um, there are a lot of people out there say, I don't have a plan B. You know, if I had a plan B, that means I don't believe in my plan A. But shit changes sometimes. You know, the last year has proved that. Um, I do a, an exercise with my clients called contingency planning, as in we've got what happens in the best case scenario in your business, what happens in the worst case scenario in your business, and what do we do? And then how do we plan like what happens for the most likely in the middle? Like let's let's plan for the best, let's prepare ourselves for the worst so we know what our next move is. And um, most likely is going to be somewhere in the middle. But 100 percent I mean, look, I've got I've got some stuff you know to share in terms of um, just making sure that you're maximizing your cash flow and your profit in your business, and also by extension, like your money in, in your personal life as well. Definitely. Um, right, a few more comments, and then we are going to come on to your kind of expert content as well. So Andrea says, "Yep, yeah, you guys contact me too, and I'm still here." That's and that's fine. it. So Andrea was one of our first guests that we had on our talk show um, when we did um, working. Uh, sorry, homeschooling and you know coping through lockdown. It was our first topic that we covered on the talk show. And Andrea is a teacher and a, and a single mum with two kids, so gave us her experiences. And yeah, and it's since then it's about connecting with her and keeping in touch with her and yeah very much one of our regulars on the show but yeah just to kind of you know add to the point of you know it's all about keeping in touch with uh with people and also sometimes a two minute 
like advice isn't going to hurt you so you don't have to charge for that if that makes sense like some people i've dealt with in the past have been oh i'm going to charge you to give you a written report and i'm like but you don't need to charge me to you know i know i get it there's time and effort that goes into things but sometimes it's just a case of i just want to know your opinion and then yeah. i'll figure it out from there and then if we need a report i'll do a report you know sort of yeah. thing so yeah. So, Andy said, um, you got you both have, have kept us going with Sooty FM. You're both amazing people. So, again, kind of the, the connecting and keeping people going through Sooty FM. And just to add, I suppose, add to that, thank you to Angie and to Nick. You know, Sooty FM, Sam and George is a clear example of connectivity matters. And yeah, you know, we like didn't to think... know these guys before we yeah. started Sooty FM. Actually, quite a few of them we didn't know. Um, we've got to know them, obviously, over the last 12 months. Yeah. So, yeah. So, this next question, again from Nick, um, and it's something we spoke about covering in today's show. So I'm going to put it up on screen and then I'm going to kind of let you either, well, you can decide whether you want to answer it now or when we go into your spiel. So it says, George, I was interested in your views on business on, and social media. And when researching for today, seems like many still think social media is simply about posting and business will come. Keen for you to cover this. So we, we're definitely going to cover it. Um, do you want to address that point now or do you want to kind of do your other bits in terms of your structure and your flow of what you've got? Yeah, um, we'll, we'll do a bit of both. Um, so we'll address it now and then we'll, we'll come back to parts of what I'm going to share with social media. But the reality is, is that um, social media, you know, it's the, role, the word's right there, right? It should be social. It's about connecting with people. Um, so look, I, I have got, I've got a modest following. I don't have a, a following where I can like, you know, rave about a shampoo and people are going to go and buy it or like rave about like something and people are going to go out and buy it. I'm not, you know, I'm not a Kardashian or whatever. But what what I have found a relative amount of success in is connecting with people. And look, I appreciate that we all go through a journey. And when we first start our businesses or we're a little bit fearful coming out of lockdown, which, you know, maybe a lot of people here are that, you know, that might make you feel like, you should discount your prices or do stuff for free or like all this kind of stuff. And the reality is, is all you have to do is just stack on even more value. Um, and there's lots of lots of really easy ways of finding out how to do that. But when it comes to social media, um, I'll share five uh, things that um, which won't encroach on the content I'm going to share, but five things that I believe that all of us should be doing. Um, number one is you should be posting some education. It's the five E's. The first E is education. If you, by by sharing education about your industry, about your products, about your services, about um, your industry and your expertise, you're you're creating the, the vibe of reciprocity. So you're giving something first without expecting anything and you're more likely to have people reach out to you. So you're educating people so they're better off after seeing your posts, whether they're videos or written or pictures or whatever, or blogs, they're better off after consuming that than they were before. The second is evidence. You have to show people, um, demonstrate why you're good. I can sit here and say, guys, come on, man. I'm a TEDx speaker. I'm an expert empire speaker. I've got this many clients. I've got this much money in the bank. I've got whatever. No one gives a crap. Let a client tell you their experience, and that speaks a thousand words. The third e is examples of your work. So if you're in a visual industry, showing them, you know, um, before and after pictures or, you know, if you're in the fitness space or if you're in the event space, you know, showing the difference between like a room that hasn't been made up and a room that then has been made up or with a DJ set up or, you know, with coordination or like whatever the, the service is. So just giving people an example of what it's like to experience your products and services. And then the fourth E is explanation. So uh, how can you explain what it's like for someone to um, engage you, um, you know, with your products and services so they get a feel for it. You know, for me, in my business, I often show my training center in my my office so people can start visualizing what it'd be like to sit in the room, to access the content, to be a part of, you know, what's going on. And then the fifth E is emotion. And that comes down to, like, connecting with people because, like, we all talk about these big businesses and blue chip companies. It's just people. It's people that are running these businesses. It's people that are making decisions. It's people that are doing things. So people need, as a human need, to feel that connection with, with other human beings. It's one of our human needs. 
So showing emotion, showing the person behind the business, showing your highs and lows. And by emotion, I don't mean like jump on a, on a Facebook Live and start crying <laughs> and whatever. I'm not saying that. Um, and when you are sharing your lows, and this bit's important, only share your lows after you've figured out the solution, after you've like come out the other end so that yeah, you can yeah. share from a place of, I had this devastating thing that happened, this crazy thing that happened with a client. This is what we did. This is how we dealt with it. This is the result the client got. This is how happy they are. And you show the after effects of it. So those five E's, um, education, evidence, examples, explanations, and emotion will set you free when it comes to social media. And then once you're doing that on a consistent basis, and this is not my words, this is uh, one of the guys that was lucky enough to meet um, because I spoke with him last year on, uh, at one of these events, a guy called Trent Shelton, who used to be an NFL player and is now a motivational speaker. And he says, look, by, by being consistent with your social media, not just posting every single day, but posting good content that's relevant for the people that are your people that you can help. By being consistent, you give people the feeling and the perception that you're reliable. And by giving people the feeling that you're reliable, it gives them the feeling that you're trustworthy. And then, then you'd end up doing more business with people. And then, like I said earlier on in this live, um, I'm not sure if Nick was actually tuning in at the time, but I get a lot more, sorry, I get a lot less likes, comments and shares that I did years ago, but I'm getting, like I'm having more conversations with people and more messages and more clients from social media, all organic, none of it paid, not knocking like paid ads, but it's just not something that I've, that I've um, focused on too much. And I'm just reaching out to people and leaving voice notes. And I'm saying, look, thanks for following me. I, I appreciate it. Like, what can I do? Like, I hope you and your family are safe and well. That then triggers conversations for them to consume more of my content. And if they think it's crap, cool. They don't have to consume it anymore. Yeah. If they think it's good, they respond. Now we're in a conversation because like, the whole point of social media should be to get people's attention, then go yeah. from there to DMs and go from there to a phone call and from there to doing business. That's it. Doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. Definitely. So I've got one more from uh it's actually from my brother from the Midri saying um contingency planning is important. This stresses the importance of setting a budget or a plan, even more so now for your business and scenario planning before you start the year. So again, kind of touching on what you said, but um you know, really important about contingency planning. Um, anything you want to sort of add to, to what Dim said? Yeah, absolutely, mate. Look, look, this could be a good time for me to just like go straight into some of this content because I've prepared five guesses that people can take away from this and rewatch and you know and share it with with someone who they feel like could benefit from it. And the first S, uh, or actually, are you cool with me to go in? Yeah, 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 yeah. of course, yeah. yeah. So the first S is structure. So what I mean by that is, like, you got to prepare yourself, like, put yourself in the best position to be successful. So plan your day the night before so that you know what your priorities are for the next day. That gives you a nice starting point for structure. And then I've got a maximum of five things that I need to get done every single day. And if I do any more than that, it's a bonus. But those five things I might get done by 6 p.m. I might get them done by 12 p.m. If I want, I can take the afternoon off and go and spend time homeschooling with, with the little one or, or go for a walk or take the girls to the park or, you know, um, give my wife the afternoon off who's been an absolute soldier or do whatever I need to do, but I just keep it simple. And then number three is just have um, income generating activities every single day, like without a shadow of a doubt. And what I mean by that is like an income generating activity could be like booking sales calls and sales meetings. It could be having those meetings and having those calls. It could be making follow-up calls to someone that made an inquiries for your products and services. It could be chasing outstanding payments, outstanding invoices. It could be sending out quotes and proposals. It could be um, like like sending out like anything that like information that people are waiting for, or you've had quotations that you've already sent out or proposals, but you haven't heard back. Look, it's been a crazy year, but like, people get distracted. Like it's on you as the professional to follow yeah, up yeah. in a professional, polite way. Um, so that's the first S, just having that structure, you know. Um, the second S is sustainability. And this comes back to what your brother was just saying about contingency planning, like planning out your finances. And so this is something that I shared very, very early on 
um, we went into the first lockdown on the 24th of March last year, which is have a look at your expenses personally and in your business and push back anything that you can push back if you need to, like rent and um, mortgages and things in your business and stuff like that. Have a look at maybe organising some payment holidays, which aren't as relevant right now because we're coming out of the lockdown situation. Um, delay payments. Um, another thing you could do is bring in money that's owed to you in the future. So let's just say you've got ongoing clients that are yeah. going to owe you money in the future for future services and products. You could call that money in early by incentivizing them financially to pay you that money early. Um, you can also maintain your existing client base. And this speaks to what we were talking about about strong connections. Like I'm telling you, like you look after your clients, especially in crazy times like in and out of lockdowns, they'll look after you and your family. Pick up the phone. How are you doing? Is there anything I can do for you? What else could we do for you? Um, you know, checking in. How are you? Like finding out what their concerns are, what their worries are, what the next problem that they might have that you can solve. Like if you got on the phone to your clients that are booking weddings in or postponed for this year or next year, and you picked up the phone and say, look, the purpose of my call is, number one, to check in on you. How are you doing? Have a little chit-chat. Number two, um, purpose of my call. Like, what else do you need from me? What else could me and Sam do for you during this time? What else is going on regarding your wedding that you might want to bounce it off someone else who's a wedding supplier as well? Yeah. You know, because yeah. they, you might know someone else that they're having a little bit of, you know, a, a disconnect with that you can go in there and smooth it out for them. And then now all of a sudden you've added even more value without it costing you any more money or hardly any time. Get some feedback. This is the stuff that's going to set you up. And then... Um, and then obviously, like, you know, you've got access to, you know, from the sustainability point of view, access to various funds, which are coming to an end in terms of like furloughs and, you know, bounce back loans and coronavirus business interruption loans and stuff like that, overdraft facilities. Um, like I advise my clients not to get themselves into debt, but to have cash buffers, cash flow buffers. Like there's credit cards out there now, not just Amex and, and certain MasterCards, but they offer Avios points. And because... Um, we haven't traveled as much as we normally would in the last 12 months, like any of us, mm -hmm. rather than just having an Avios point system that you use against flights and hotels and stuff, you can actually <coughs> redeem those points against money. So it can knock off your credit card bill so that you're making like absolutely free additional, no strings attached, extra profit. You know, so just like using the system you know, to leverage debt and leverage these things that are available to, to use. That's the second S, sustainability. The third S is social proof. And this goes back to what Nick was saying before about social media and stuff. And so what I think is really important is to show the reality of the results of your products and services, as in like what experience do people have when they deal with you? Like put that social proof out there and then demonstrate the results. Um, that people are getting and the reviews that you're getting and the um the fourth s is your sales process because there's going to be a lot of people that are going to automatically expect you to drop your prices give loads of stuff for free like all this kind of stuff just because of lockdown but like the bank hasn't called you and said oh um, <laughs> sam and george out of the goodness of our hearts like as hsbc or whatever we're gonna not let you, you don't have to pay your mortgage for the next six months. Don't worry about it. Or, yeah, yeah. you know, pay us in, in likes and comments from your social media. It doesn't work like that. So you're not going to get any of that. So you can't then just turn around to all of your clients and say, guys, everything's for free. I actually had one client that said, we thought you were going to like relinquish any, any payments. No, why would I do that? Like, I've got to practice what I preach. I'm going to teach you and show you step by step how to add even more value so yeah. that you don't lose clients, you don't reduce price, you don't do any of that, and you still keep your client base. So you've got to do that. And your sales process just has to change a little bit. So it might take a little bit longer. You might have to have a couple more calls. But if you connect with people and you say, look, how are you doing? What else can we do for you? Like, what do I have to do to keep your business? Like, ask yeah. people those questions. They'll tell you. If they turn around to you and say, there is nothing you can do, we're not using you, well, at least you know, you can get some yeah. feedback. But the yeah. reality is you say, look, we value you. Like, we've got a list of our most important clients. You're top of that list. What can we do for you so that we can 
solve a problem for you with regards to your wedding. We can save you time. We can save you money. We can make you money. Like, what do you need from us? Yeah. And if they say, I don't know, what can you do? Okay, cool. We can do this. We can do that. We can do the other. Like, just, like, we can we can help you, like, save money. Like, one of the things that when me and Maria got married, I remember, like, all of the wedding suppliers said to us, right, we want the full balance paid a month before you get married. <laughs> okay, cool. That seems reasonable. Like, I genuinely, I thought it was reasonable, right? I've never got married before. I don't intend to get married again. Like, it was a one one and done deal for me, right? So I look, we looked, all of the couples getting married out there, surely you look to, to you guys, right, to guide them through it because you guys have seen it a hundred times, a thousand times. So I looked, I created a spreadsheet, naturally, right, of when the money was going out. I thought, Jesus Christ, I've got like tens of thousands of pounds going out of our account on the 7th of August, a month before our wedding day. Like, how does that work? So I got on the phone to people and I was like, I want to pay you a week before. Here's why. I want to pay you like two months before. I want to pay you three months before. The guys, obviously, that were getting paid before were a lot happier. But the point is I need to stagger these things out. Yeah. So by educating people, going back to those five E's, you're adding more value. So like it staggers it out. And, you know, and then you can like say to people, look, we take credit card payments, you know, so if you want to like do that and it gives you an extra month worth of cash flow, you know, so you can all, like, just give people advice and value, you know. Um, but when it comes to the sales process, we all have to adapt a little bit, you know. And then the final S is success. So you have to define as a business owner what success looks like to you because success to you will be different to what success is defined as for me and you guys and and anyone else watching right now but then also we could could have variations of success based on now that we're coming out of lockdown you know so again it goes back to contingency planning and saying like what's the best case scenario coming out of lockdown what's the worst case scenario and how do we like prepare for that and plan for it so that we we know our next move and then like the most likely outcome is going to be probably where we're going to land. So what what does the best case look like for you and the worst case and all that stuff? And then how do we create a strategy so that we can put ourselves in the best position to be successful? And then we've got a lockdown business strategy. We create a list and we just attack it. And there's just little things that you can do on a daily basis that gets you closer to that. But just having a structure in terms of like, what you can do on a daily basis. Because once you've set that target, like almost like park it, put it on ice. It's over there. Like I'm not thinking about it every day. What I am focusing on is the daily activity, the daily actions, the daily connections that I can make that are going to get me closer and closer and closer to that target every single day. The more people you speak to, the more hands you shake out of COVID season so you don't get the virus. Um, the more stuff you do like that, the more people you connect with, the more messages, the more people you say, like, how are you doing? Like, the more people you share, uh, and, like, how you care about them. Because, like, people, like, what's the, what's the saying? Um, I want to make sure I get this right. Um, people um, don't care until they know how much you care or whatever the term is. You know, in terms of, like, um, people don't care how much you know. Or I, I completely messed it up. Until they know how much you care. Um, it's yeah. not my call, but like just show people how much you care about them as a human being first. Yeah. And that everything that you're doing is with with like the view of how can I make their life easier? How can I help them? How can I solve a problem for them? How can I make that life easier for them? Yeah. So that they get what they need because you look after your clients, they'll look after you and your business. It's as simple as that. Brilliant. Thank you. A um, couple more hellos from people that were just tuned in while you were going through. So, hi, Jimmy. Welcome to Loves the Show. Hi, George, as well. Um, and I knew this was going to come up at some point, but Christine hi. said, hi, both Georges. You look similar. <laughs> How are you doing, Christine? Great to see you. Thing, right? <laughs> Greek George thing, clearly. We get to a certain age and we feel like we need to shave it all off and uh, it. grow it down here. <laughs> grow yeah. the beard. Don't bother. Don't all of that. That's it. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, and just to kind of, I suppose, emphasize the point you said about, you know, speaking to the banks and lenders and you know what, I'm, I made the mistake. So business insurance, um, you know, I've been paying my business insurance because obviously I've still got equipment that needs to be insured, even though I'm not DJing and stuff like that. And for the last 11 yeah. months, we've been, you know, I've been paying it out, paying it out, paying it out. Last month, 
I thought, well, hang on a minute. I've spoken to every other thing, so the mortgages and, like I say, the loans and, and all the other things to kind of try and help out financially. And I forgot about the insurance. So I phoned them up and I reduced my payments um, by more than half. Now, had I done that back in March or even April, you know, a month after it done, I would have saved myself a lot of money. You know, um, again, just picking up the phone, like you say, connecting with people. And it doesn't just have to be clients. It could be suppliers that actually provide you with a service. And they say taking costs out of your business when things are slowing down. So not necessarily just now during coronavirus, but if you're in a business and you have insurance and things like that, it could be a website, could be whatever, all those little costs. Like I say, I mean, I've, got, I've got an iPad that I've been paying £13 a year, um, £13 a month for, for years, just to be able to have, um, say, internet when I'm doing gigs in the middle of nowhere um, in case I need to stream something or, or whatever. Um, and again, during lockdown, review my my accounts and where else can I save some money cut that out 13 pounds a month doesn't sound a lot but when you add it up over a cost over the course of a year and a year and a half it adds up so you know um and then just add one thing to that which is such a great point because yeah 13 pound a month but you might get five or ten or twenty versions of that across your monthly outgoings and now you're saving a few hundred quid a month now this is quite interesting because um like I didn't get, I don't know about you, but did you get a phone call from Sky Sports? If you got Sky Sports saying, <laughs> just so you know, while, while live matches aren't being played, we've taken the liberty of cancelling your sports subscription. You know, we just want to say thank you for being a customer. Not one of us, I'm confident, got that phone call. I heard someone talking about it on Facebook. I got on the phone to them, was like, look, cancel the thing, whatever. And they were like, yeah, no problem. Um, do you want us to reinstate it automatically when the live matches go on again or do you want to call us so we sorted that out now the point is is that in my mind i could be wrong it's just my opinion and i'm happy to debate this with anyone on the planet if bt sport or sky sports called you and said george how you doing we're calling for two reasons number one how you and your family you're right we're just checking in cool number two listen we've taken the liberty of cancelling your sports package because there's no live matches going on at the moment. Um, We've done it. We're saving you money. Like we don't, don't need to thank us. We don't need to do anything. It's it's like, you know, it's the least we could do. Thank you so much for being a customer. Would that make you more likely or less likely to a carry on using them and b post on social media and tag them in? Of course. course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For me, those little things are a game changer, but imagine the free PR that they yeah. would have got to the back of that. Yeah, exactly. Had they just you know used their, their own initiative. Yep, definitely. Right. So conscious of time, we're uh, we're into the second hour now. So um, massive thanks to everyone who's uh, tuned in and you know getting the comments in throughout the show. We um, I've got another couple of questions, and I know we've got um, another guest. We've got Luke from FNL Kitchens who's going to join us shortly as well. So um he's been waiting patiently there for quite a while so yeah yeah, he's with us um but i just want to kind of cover uh one more question actually i suppose there's one more really um and this i think applies to a lot of the listeners that are listening in as well because obviously a lot of the examples around you know obviously i'm a dj we do weddings together and stuff like that so we've got listeners that you know are plumbers we've got listeners that make stuff and you know flower boxes and and all sorts we've got a a variety of um traders i suppose out there and the one and the one thing that i've seen and i've noticed you know throughout the last you know 12 months or 11 months while people have been locked up is you know during lockdown it's seen we've seen a massive growth in kind of people starting their own businesses from home whether that be because they've been made redundant or because they're on furlough and they're not getting their full income or whether just because you know they're they might not have had a job before but maybe their partner's lost their job or they just want to do something or they've obviously got more time because they're at home all the time. So they've started up businesses. Blondie's done that, as we said, kind of at the start of the show, you know, she's she's doing her personalization stuff. I'm obviously going to plug it as well. Her personalized gifts. Um, this week, she made some sweet cones ready for, you know, Alicia's birthday to give out at school. So doing sweet treats. Um, but, you know, there, there's all sorts of you know, home businesses that have kind of emerged over the over the last 11 months. I suppose the question, um, and I suppose this is more so for Sam, uh, well, the answer is for Sam, but, you know, in other businesses like hers, how can they take the next steps to kind of grow their business over the next six to 12 months? They've just started, you know, within, you know, they might be coming up to a year old, they might be six months old, they might be three months old. 
again, with the idea that we're coming out of lockdown and soon kids will be back at school from next week and then slowly things will start opening up. So you can have after school clubs again and then, you know, football maybe on the weekends or sports on the weekends. How do these businesses that have just started up continue that momentum and not kind of lose it with the whole, oh, well, I've gone back to routine. I've got to take the kids to school and after school clubs. And then the weekend, we've got to do this. Oh, do you know, it was fun while it lasted. I'll give it up. How do those businesses bloom, I suppose, or blossom? Is this a dig at me? I, I no, feel no, no, like this is a dig at me because obviously, yeah. It's not a dig, starting. it's it's a preempt of, you know, we're, we're coming out of lockdown. We're looking forward to the kids going back to school and football and ballet and kickboxing and all the other fun stuff they do and swimming and whatnot. How do you then obviously factor in a new business with going back to the real world or as much of the real world as, as possible? Yeah, um, this is a great question. Um, and look, if you're waiting for something that's going to be like out of this world, rocket science level, um, I'm sorry, but I'm going to disappoint you. The reality oh. is, is that like the most important thing is getting money in. It's cash flow. It's making sales and getting that money in. Don't worry about any fancy stuff and all the extra frills and, you know, like incredible graphic design and websites and, and all that stuff. Like, the reality is, is for every one of us that's got an idea or a product or a service, we either solve a problem for someone or we make someone's life easier. And we, with or without COVID, we live in a time of convenience, a time of things, people wanting things like quickly and straight away. So um, if you've got limited amount of time or limited amount of days or hours in a day because of getting back, you know, into school runs and and you know after school clubs and this and that whether it's online or offline the reality is is that you just need to prioritize so you know without sounding too extreme or at the risk of sounding extreme if i let's just use um dj blondie as an example if i had a gun to your head um sam and i literally said look god forbid the people that you love the most are going to get this bullet like and that sounds really extreme you've got to make this amount of calls to make this amount of sales in the next 24 hours, you're going to figure out a way of doing it. Yeah, of course. So, like the reality is, is that like we prioritize things based on the context of where we're at and what's going on in the world, right? So right now, um, yes, there's 10, 15, 20, 100, 1,000 other things I could be doing right now. I could have done bedtime tonight. I could have been you know sitting down chatting to my wife i could have been out doing, I didn't, like, not out because we're locked down but i could have been doing other stuff but part of my vision and my three key targets are to be doing things like this so that i can you know share any bit of value that i can you've just got to prioritize and think to yourself i need to do the certain things that are going to move the needle the most so like rather than worried about other things you can set social media posts up on a schedule, on a program, right? On a on a Sunday, you can schedule them to come out and do the five E's. Like we said, Monday evidence, uh, sorry, Monday education, Tuesday evidence, Wednesday examples of your work, um, Thursday explanation of how you work, um, and Friday's emotion. Set that up. Then you can just spend a little bit of time, five minutes a day, like literally voice noting people. Um, you know, anyone that likes your comments, get on to them straight away and say, thank you so much for liking or commenting on my post, out of curiosity, what did you like about it? Now you're in a conversation, you move it onto DMs, now you're on a phone call, they've got a birthday coming up, great, you know, what's their favorite sweets? You know, like how urgent do you want them? What kind of sweets do you like? like? You know, whatever it is, just get into a conversation and just start adding value to people. Like, if you thought about it, like what are the five biggest problems or situations that people that are your ideal clients need improving? And just focus on those, just talk about those. Um, and just go straight to the point. Like, look, we've all got stuff that that we go through, uh, and we're all dealing with what we're dealing with. Um, so, like, you know, I've got I've got a great life. I've had a great life. I've had it a lot easier than a lot of people. I'm very, very, very grateful. There was a period of time in 2015 where, within three months, um, our mum got diagnosed with myeloma blood cancer. We had uh, the birth of our first daughter, Katerina, who's now five, and my dad was driving outside the Salisbury Arms in Winchmore Hill, round around about five miles an hour, just under, blacked out while he was driving, had a car crash. But in that three month period, I, I shit myself. Like I literally had to work less hours because I had to be at home with the newborn baby and supporting Maria. 
I had to be at hospital appointments for both parents. I had to earn more money because Maria was um, on maternity leave and the maternity pay was crap. And I had to be less stressed and more focused so I can listen to what the doctors were saying about medication. You know, going from taking no pills to my mum taking 81 pills a week. You know, so and don't get me wrong, like, like we've like mum's doing great, dad's doing great, Katarina's doing great, like, you know, very, very blessed. What I'm saying is we get pushed to extremes and we figure it out because that's what we do. Like we're adaptable. So it's how, it's I, how you deal with the situation, right? What's that? It's how you deal with the situation, right? Yeah. So, so it's yeah, so I missed that. What was that last bit? It's um like putting each thing into a basket, for example, and like you said, having a structure. You know, right? I've got to deal with that. I've got to deal with that. I've got to deal with that, and then slowly working through them all. Yeah, so. exactly. Like, and part of the content that I actually missed out is when you're talking about your sales process. Like, don't call the people if you've got like thirty minutes a day, right, to work on your business. Like, let's just talk serious extreme now. Yeah. You've got 30 minutes a day. Don't go and call the people that have just showed an interest or just liked the post. Call the people that have already inquired. Call the people that are already um, in the pipeline. Call the people that are hotter. Yeah. 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 It sounds like really basic and simple. Don't like focus on the people that are colder and just come into the pipeline. Focus on the people that said they want to use you, that you just haven't finalized it. Pick up the phone and go straight to the point. How are you doing? Number one, just checking in. How you doing? Family good? Everyone safe and well? Cool. Number two, purpose of my call. We wanted to get you booked in for the sweet treats that you wanted. And what date do you need them delivered? What's your favorite treats out of the, the 10 that we gave you, the options? Go straight to the point. Like, people are busy. You know, when people say to you, um, they answer the phone and they're like, oh, I'm just in a meeting or I'm just busy. Look, let's not be a prick about it. But you weren't that busy. Otherwise, you wouldn't answer the phone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> it was that important. You were not the phone, yeah. yeah. And then honestly, yeah. yeah, I invest a lot of time in my own education. I've got great people around me and like I've done a lot of sales training and like all this different stuff with a guy called Matt Elwell. And, you know, if someone says to you, look, I'm in a meeting or I'm really busy, can you call me back later? Yeah, appreciate you're busy. I respect your time so that I can maximize your time. Let's get you booked in for this or all I need to do is just take a payment for the sweet treats so that I can get it delivered so that your daughter has the best birthday possible during lockdown. Go straight to the point and talk about the results that they're going to get off yep. the back of your sweet treats. Because it's not the sweets that we care about. It's the feeling that we're going to get. That our yep. daughter or son had the best birthday possible even yep. during lockdown. Like, no one cares about the money. Money's useless until we place a value on it of what we can do with it. And so what I'm saying to you is, in my example, I went from working like a 60 or 70 hour week to working 22 hours a week and earning more money. Like, let's be honest, taking a positive out of it, had I not have had that experience, and God forbid I wish it didn't happen, apart from obviously our daughter being born, but I've learned from that experience. Like, you're going to be learning from your experience, which is right now I've got to manage coming out of lockdown, getting a new business off the ground, um, and doing the school runs and, you know, after school clubs and, and managing the house and all that kind of stuff. So, like be more purposeful you know go yeah. to people and say look you've got a decent following on instagram or on facebook what do i have to do to get you to promote us ask yeah. the question and they turn around and say all right um nothing you know give me a bag of sweets or do the next birthday for free cool done next person same thing next person like you know just just go straight to the the most important thing rather than like not saying that you waste time but we can all get into the trap of doing stuff that isn't the right thing or isn't what we should be doing, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. Sorry, man. I go off on one, I get really passionate, I get yeah, stuck. No, no, it's fine. And, th and this, is, this is what we love about this talk show because, again, we have we never set a time limit. We tend to do a couple of hours in these talk shows, but some of the topics we've covered have just been so engaging or there's been so much interaction or whatever it is. And, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely one to say we, we've got businesses, lots of our listeners have got businesses, so it's another reason why I kind of approach you. But Andrew said... Go, go back to the Sky topic about, you know, them calling up to say cancel it during lockdown and reinstate it. She's saying, well, why cancel the channel? Better off saying have it for free. So, you know, again, I, I, we yeah, we've got we've got you know access to Sky Sports and stuff and, and everything else. But, yeah, it's, it's one of those, like you say, if, if it's a service that and I don't know what Sky Sports were actually putting on when there was no football. too. it could have been that the, the, the channel was 
actually cancelled. If they did have other content on there, then yeah, I suppose it would, be, would have been better if they said, look, we're going to give it to you for free for the next X amount of time or until at least live matches commence again. Um, you know, just so you're aware, hope you're well, blah, blah, blah. So I suppose it depends what the content. But yeah, again, if you've got a service that, you know, if there's something you can do. But yeah, I, I totally get where. Listen, I mean, look, like, I, I actually, like, I didn't get tested, but I was really ill from the 20th of March to the end of March last year, suspected COVID. There was no test going on at the time. Um, the NHS direct that we called every day were like, yeah, you've got it. You know, if you've got, if you're struggling to breathe, call an ambulance. But I was in bed for 10 days. When I came out of that at the end of March, I crapped myself. I thought, you know, like everyone's on lockdown. The majority of our clients are trades and construction business owners. If they can't go into people's homes to earn money, then like, how are we going to keep them as clients? So I just thought to myself, you know what? How can I add the most amount of value that I possibly can in order to keep my clients? So if I look after them, they'll look after me. So we had clients on, like pay us for one-to-one -one consultancy and guys that were in the trade mastermind, which is a group setting. So I just went all in and said, right, guys, from now on, I'm going to give you eight steps, an eight-step strategy for you to put yourself in the best position from a cash flow point of view, way before like the bounce back loans and furlough schemes, all that came in. All of my guys had more money in their banks then before the bounce back loans. Then when that money came in, they were, they were flying. But I thought to myself, what can I do? And I was like, right, you've got access to me one-to-one -to -one on a weekly basis, even though people pay me a considerable amount of money for monthly one-to-ones. And I was just like, I was just on it. Like there wasn't, there wasn't a few days or a week that went past that I didn't know what was going on in my clients' businesses and their personal lives. But I just went all in. I was like, forget getting new clients. Let's just maintain what we've got. Let's keep yep. these guys happy because they will stick with us. Look yep. after your clients and just taking that mentality into coming out of lockdown now. Like, what could you possibly to do for your clients right now? And what's the next thing that they might need help with that you can help them with that as well? Brilliant. Thank you. So I've got another one for another message or comment from Paula. And I like this one. And you'll see why in a second. So Paula says, no one wants to talk on the phone anymore. Messaging is so much easier. Also, you can't say, don't be a prick about it. Or if they were that busy, they wouldn't pick up. They may not know who's calling. It may be urgent. So pick up. So uh, the reason why I like it is because you're pulling us up on, you know, what, what we're both saying about it. And, yeah, that's and, cool. and it's true. And obviously, it sheds, you know, but some good tips. So, um, and to the point of you're right and i've done it before when you get a phone number sorry you get a call from a number you don't recognize and again as a dj most of my calls come from obviously phone numbers i don't know you know george you've been recommended blah 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 so i see a number i don't know who it is and i might be just about to sit down to eat or i might be on the phone already but on hold to sky or to whoever so i just want to answer the phone see who it is is it a scam phone call which i can just ignore or is it, someone, is it a potential client so I often do that. I'll, I'll put my hands up. I often do do that just to catch the call and see who is it. So I know whether to call back after. Hi, who's speaking? If it is a client, yep, great. Do you know what? I'm just about to sit down with my family to eat. Makes me a real person. Um, but what what are the details? So what's the date of the party? What is it? Let me eat. Let me check my diary and I'll call you back in half an hour, an hour. Um, and it's that piece. So I totally get what Paul is saying. Sometimes you do answer the phone when you know you can't really answer the phone, but you're just intrigued to see who it is, right? But the one point that you've missed in that is she said that everyone prefers messaging because it's easier. Yes, it is easier, but you lose the interaction. So yes, I could text you and say, okay, this is what I do. Oh, here's a picture of my sweets or this or that. But actually you don't get a feel for me as a person yeah. over a message. Yeah, You yeah. might read a message. You might... Yeah read it in a different content even though that's not how it's been written yeah. you can write something and it can come across in hundreds of different ways than actually when you say it you can yeah. hear the emotion you can hear the excitement the excitement yeah. i mean we've had brides bless them they've been so heartbroken like we've we've touched on and i can sympathize with them over the phone if i just send them oh i'm sorry hon it's okay that's not going to make her feel any better if, it, if it's written on a text. If I say it to her in person, well, okay, feel the empathy. you know, I'm really sorry. Listen, it's going to be okay. The main things is we're healthy, you know, and, and all of that, give them some positives. It changed yeah. the dynamics of a conversation. So yeah. I 
don't like businesses that want to do it all over messages. I like the person mm. that picks up the phone. Yeah. I mean, we had it. We ordered a bed, for example, just standard bed. We ordered it. He did it all via messenger that to the point it was being delivered. And I was like, are you sure we've ordered the right thing? Because <laughs> I didn't speak to someone to say, right, this is what I want. This is what color yeah. I want. This is how many drawers I want, yeah. you know, and, and we were. So, I mean, Paula says as well, you know, yes. And as a parent, you could be at the school or doctors, etc. So yeah, there are times when you can't talk, but you don't want to miss the call. At least you want to know who it is that's calling you. So, you know, whether it's almost like worth your time, you know, to call back afterwards or, if it's urgent, etc. Um, but again, just to again kind of play devil advocate with with what you just said about preferring the whole um, talk and conversation. Of course, you know, there's a, the phrase of you know the art of conversation is dead in today's generation. You know, and in a lot of contexts that is true. But at the same point, and I kind of get this from my kind of day job, it's about communicating with customers clients people in their channel of choice exactly so it's not just about well you need to speak to someone to take the book in because actually that person might be working 60 70 hours a day and they don't have 20 minutes to get to know who you are and find out about your dj service or your sweet treats or how many flavors of sweets they might just want to know look how much for 20 sweet treats for my kid's birthday next week or next month? How quickly and can you deliver it? They don't want to speak to you. They don't want to get to know you. They're, they're really busy. And for them, their channel of choice is Messenger or Instagram or text message. And I've, because I, I used to say the same, we used to have this conversation between us, you know, when I had clients, I, I'd book weddings. And again, going back to the whole fact of, you know, weddings are very expensive, especially in the Greek community. And I'd, I'd be DJing for a wedding, you know, on the weekend, right? I've been talking to these clients for the last six months, 12 months. You know, I've never spoken to them. There's only happened once or twice, but there's been one or two couples that they've either been so busy, like doctors or Don't nurses. Even know what they look like you or know, anything. It's just we've had all the communication by emails and messages and gone through all, all the itinerary for the day, but that's just been their channel of choice. But then on the day... We get to meet and up, you know, fantastic. There's others that we meet up a year before their wedding. We become we become almost like best mates and family before their wedding, and then by their wedding, we know so much about each other, like you know, not just about their wedding but personal. So it's about having that relationship. I'm not connection. saying you can't do those things. That's that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't reply or don't message or email. Okay, fine. If that's how they want to work, do that. But I just. I really do believe in the, you know, picking yeah. up the phone. Angie agrees. She says there's nothing like talking to someone. So I'd like yeah. to add something if I can. Yes. Yeah, go, go. Ahead. Before we introduce your guest as well, your your client. Yeah, yeah. Bless him. He's been waiting for ages. Um, yeah. Bring that that uh, the, the question or the point back up from Paula, if that's all right, just so I can see the... Yeah. Um... Mm. Cool. Okay. So firstly, let me just say, Paula, um, I love you for being um, so comfortable that you can like challenge us and you know uh, be open and honest. So that's the first thing. Uh, thank you very much for that because that's what this kind of thing's for, right? Exactly. Um, what I'd like to do in return, and this is come, please take this is from a place of love. Um, firstly, um, it's interesting that you say no one wants to talk on the phone anymore. Um, I mean, at the risk of being literal, have you literally asked everyone um, and do you know that for a fact? The answer is no. Um, and going back to what, what um, George just mentioned in that content uh, and um, scenarios is is kind of useless without context. So the, the important thing is I might prefer phone calls. Someone else might prefer messages, like you say, someone else emails. The important thing is to find out what's important to your target market, your ideal clients, your actual clients. And then if you can communicate with them in the ways that they prefer to be communicated with. So, um, you know, the, you saying that no one uh, talks on the phone anymore is, you know, I mean, look, it's, it's just not true. Um, also, uh, what else you say? So also you can't say don't be a prick about it. If they were that busy, they wouldn't pick up. Well, again, look, on that point, I was just trying to bring home the point of, look, there's certain things that we do. <clears throat> I'll use myself as the example. I'm on this live right now being interviewed. If my phone rang now, I'm 100% not answering it. Why? Because I'm busy. I'm not going to say, yeah, yeah, listen, I've just been interviewed. I'll call you back. I'm, I'm not going to do that because I'm busy. If I'm swimming in the sea 
in Cyprus with my daughters, I'm not going to answer the phone. If I'm lying in bed with my wife, I'm not answering the phone. So there's levels to it and it's, it's, there's context is what we're saying. Um, so the point is of people saying, oh, I'm busy, <clears throat> you know, it, it's just a... <laughs> I don't know what you guys said, but it's interesting. She's pulling me up on the whole, you know, if we're laying in bed chilling he, and the phone my, goes. My husband, <laughs> sorry to cut you, but my husband does this and, and he's got such a great heart. And it's one of the things that I love about him. And I'm sure all the listeners know this about him already. But he he feels sorry for people. He he and look, we all feel sorry for people. We want to help. We want to help. But at the same point, I have a family to feed and I have Family time and I, I mean, we did it last weekend. I hate doing it, but we we cancelled last Friday's show because we were spending time with the kids for Kai's birthday. It's Alicia's birthday this weekend, so we did it sort of last weekend. So we got it out the way, and obviously we'll still spend time with them this weekend too. But it was kind of no, let's just focus on them for the weekend, and. Since lockdown, it's been one of the greatest things for me as his wife to sort of say, yeah, there's no, oh, I'm rushing off to a DJ client. Oh, I'm rushing off to do this. I'm rushing off to do that because obviously all our work has stopped. Don't get me wrong. I miss work. But it's also been nice to sort of realise what's important yeah. in life. And like you said, you were doing 60 hours a week and now you do 22 and actually your life, you've got more time for your family where my husband, unfortunately, he was giving so much time to everyone else and not to his family where now I think you, you found the balance. we found the balance and the messaging and phone calls is because sometimes he'll still uh, slip up and Oh, yeah, I'm just going to take this call two hours later. In, I'm sitting in my there, defense, okay. that's normally from people from Australia who are in a completely different time zone. But, <laughs> but it's, you know, so, it's a balance. But sorry. I'm, I'm glad to hear that, guys. Just one more point, George. Sorry, if you just bring that, that Paula's comment back up. Um, just because bring up her next one. Sorry, I don't know if this helps, but she's kind of followed up with this. So just to kind of address this. I completely agree. Talking uh, for a product is a must. If a client would like to, I was just clarifying on the negativity. Of if we can't speak and ask to call back later, doesn't mean we are pricks for picking up and saying we're busy at the moment. I, I think she might have taken it in the wrong context. So no, I'll, no. I'll bring no, this what, up. Yeah, completely wrong context. I'm not calling anyone a prick. What I'm saying is um, it was that part, that segment, uh, Paula specifically, was in the context of a business owner coming out of lockdown. And so the the some of the implications of lockdown have meant that business owners that I've spoken to, um, some of our clients, some people in our community have felt uncomfortable um, using their normal sales process because they felt like they've got to maybe drop their prices or they feel a little bit uncomfortable asking for money or asking for the sale because there's a pandemic going on and money crisis is potentially, right? So what I'm saying to you is, in the context of me speaking to another business owner and them thinking, shit, I feel a little bit uncomfortable making sales calls. What I'm saying is get yourself in the mentality of you're there to solve a problem, to add value, to improve a situation. Therefore, don't be deterred or feel bad as the business owner when you're making sales calls. If someone says, oh, I'm busy. The point of me saying, don't be a prick about it. I'm not talking to anyone in particular, calling anyone a prick. What I'm saying is, like, I'm not trying to be a prick about it when I give you this example. What I'm saying is, for the mentality of a business owner, think to yourself, you're going to be challenged with, I'm busy, call me back later, or uh, I can't think about this now. Like, th these are just the realities of what's gone on in the last 12 months. All I'm saying is, a business owner making sales calls, A, be prepared for that. B, don't feel bad about it because it's not personal against you. And C, just in a polite, professional way, say, no problem, appreciate you're busy when's the best time for us to speak and get a follow-up call booked in rather than getting off the phone and feeling really low and really down and really rejected and therefore fearing making that call again to that, that person or someone else and therefore yeah. not making sales and therefore having cash flow problems and therefore your family missing out on whatever they need in life because of that negative experience. So I wasn't yeah. calling anyone a prick. I'm just saying like, I'm not trying to be a prick about it, talking to another business partner, but I'm trying to bring people's energy up to say, look, you're going to be faced with difficult times. If they were that busy, they wouldn't have picked up. It's not against you. It's not anything personal. 
Be prepared. It's going to be tough out there, guys. But yep. what I'm saying is, all you, don't wish it was easier out there. Like, prepare yourself to be even better, to be even more thick-skinned, to make more phone calls, to be more polite, to be more professional, to say, look, I appreciate you're busy. We're here to add value. When's the best time for us to speak? Like, I'll do whatever you need. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's not, I haven't called anyone a prick. You, you, it's the, no, the context. No, I, think, I think you've explained it um, better, George, then um, she'll probably come through with another comment. But yeah, I mean, it is nerve-wracking nerve to ring people. I mean, I found it, especially when our clients were like, look, I need the money back or whatever. And I just remember sitting there thinking, how are we going to find all this money? Or, you know, we can pay this amount back or whatever. And we figured it out. We said, right, leave it with us. We'll go away. We'll discuss it. Yep. We'll figure it out. We figured out solutions. And then we had different options before you know, before we could say, right, okay, we'll do yeah. this, we'll do that. But should we go to Luke? Because he's been waiting for a very long time. Should we Let's bring up your he there, is, is he there? That's it. So, um, yeah, we've, uh, I mean, George, before we bring him, bring him on, do you want to kind of explain who Luke is and obviously why we've invited yeah. him to the show tonight? Yeah, so Luke, Luke used to be a client uh, before tonight. Now we've kept him waiting. <laughs> um, now, Luke, Luke is a top boy. Luke's a lovely, lovely guy, family man, um, got a great business. Um, he's a client. And this this just speaks to, look, as far as I'm concerned, like, I want to connect with people. Um, and this guy is, is like, has been a model client for many different reasons. He's also great at what he does. He goes above and beyond for his clients. And, you know, when I get invited to come onto things like this or I speak at events, like, I want to bring my people with me as well, you know, I, like, if my clients aren't successful, then um, I don't deserve to be successful. So when I get invited to do things like this, I want to bring people on and um, and share that that experience. And he can talk a little bit about his business and what he does. And um, yeah, let him come on and we do a proper intro. But he's a top, top guy. Top guy. Perfect. Brilliant. Well, without no further ado, let's bring Luke into the conversation. Hi, Luke. Hi, Luke. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Very yes, well. Luke. Okay. It always talks a lot, doesn't he? My yes. <laughs> well, I don't know which one you're talking about. <laughs> I'll apologize for that. You're talking about you, not me. <laughs> well, look, I'm caught up in a load of emails. <laughs> that's it. See, you can time wisely. See, look, Blondie's the, uh, the odd one out here. She's got far too much hair to be involved in this conversation. So that's <laughs> yeah, I know. This was an initiation test to join George, by the way. <laughs> Perfect. So, um, for, for obviously our listeners that are listening in, um, Obviously, going to give you a chance to introduce yourself and who you are, what you do, almost like Silla Black. You know, what's your name? Where'd you come from? But what we'd like to obviously get from you as well is, you know, how you've worked with George and some of the, you know, I suppose the, you know, the help that George has given you, etc. So we'll kind of let you tell your story, I suppose. So who are you? What's your name? Where'd you come from? <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, so my name's Luke. Um, I'm forever lived in North London. Um, I've got my own kitchen business. So I've been doing kitchens for over 10 years now, since I left school near enough. Um, so we do a range of kitchens from, from low end to high end. Um, so I started using George, um, I think we're nearly a year in George, if you correct me if I'm wrong. Seven months. Um, and seven months, there you go. Um, so I use George, so I was running my business um, blind I suppose you don't get taught about business in school um, so I left uh, a kitchen well, no, a kitchen company to start my own kitchen company um, so I was going along going along and I just thought you know what <clears throat> I'm stuck I'm stuck on so many things um, and someone I know knew George and said about it and I'm like I can't pay someone that money like you've got, you've got to be joking um, so I thought about it I thought about it so I think we spoke on the phone, he gave his spiel, he sent me a load of videos and one of the testimonial videos, I, I knew the guy, one of the guys, a tree surgeon. And I was like, all right, okay, he's done well. So we had the consultation and then I just got the connection and the vibe. Um, I suppose, you know, a bit back to what you guys were saying about the telephone calls and I couldn't have got that vibe over message, you know? So the, the first stage was George won me with the phone call and his enthusiasm and his knowledge to what he was saying and then the second stage was meeting george in his office um seeing the environment and understanding how he can help me 
Okay. Nice. And, uh, have we got a little delay or are we all right? No, I don't know. I, I don't We've know got if, a delay. I don't know if Luke, are you still there? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm on a little bit of a delay. But cool. I think. Um, I've got a few questions if that's cool. Yeah, shoot. Cool. So, Luke, um, sorry for the wait, man. Um, it's good to have you here. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, going back to you, man, like about you and your business and your journey, tell us a little bit more about what you do, um, the areas that you cover, the type of kitchens that you guys do. I've got a couple of questions for you guys as well for the listeners. Right, cool, yeah. So we're basically... Sorry, that's my phone. Carry on. Apologies. I don't know why that came through. Every time. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so we're based in North London. So we cover London and the South East predominantly, but we can cover nationwide. So we've got just before Christmas, we finished um, uh, five kitchens in Cardiff. Um, we've just currently in the process of two kitchens in Sheffield. So we can cover, you know, the UK. Um, and if anyone wants to pay for us to go abroad, we can do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and then about us as a business. So we're a kitchen um, and building supplies company. I suppose the difference with my kitchen companies, I don't have a showroom. So people automatically think, well, what, how can you help us? Um, our biggest um, tool is our virtual reality experience. So we have virtual goggles that you can put on and ultimately walk around your kitchen. So whether that's an extension that's not built, well, you're gonna see it before it's built. Um, or if it's just a normal refurb and you're just going to refigure the layout, you can see. So that's my biggest tool. I'm bringing the showroom in theory to your front room because um, we'll bring the samples, we'll bring everything we do. So we have just recently moved into an office um, with the success of George's help. Um, and that's someone that George knows, funny enough. Um, and it's called our hub. So we've got all our samples and colors and everything you need to see, a demo unit. Um, again, it's not a showroom, it's just an inviting place to come and pick your kitchen you know showrooms are very much outdated you know um you're never i had a, a discussion with a developer he's got a really really difficult customer shall we say and they won't buy from me unless i have a showroom and i said no problem i'll go get a showroom tomorrow if you can guarantee me the kitchens i put in your customer will like and he couldn't guarantee it to me so they come to where we are now <laughs> Um, and they've done the virtual experience and yeah, so, so that's, that's who we are. We're just a kitchen experience, I suppose, with a, a warmly feel, you know, WhatsApp group, telephone calls, you know, eight o'clock live radio chats. <laughs> <laughs> I ask you a personal question then. Um, you said about when you first heard about George and you were like, oh, I'm not paying that guy, which look when you're starting out or like you said you've just gone on your own from a big well-known company you kind of think, I haven't really got the money right to pay someone else but now seven months in i'm sure without a doubt you would say it's the best money you've ever spent right yeah 100 percent. and i've sort of learned through this journey of just being a business owner you've got to spend money to make money um so not only do i do jaws for me and george sort of um and i sort of my own platform of sort of mental health awareness um, via my Instagram. So I'm doing a lot of interviews with people who have gone through some stuff, who haven't gone through some stuff, people I don't necessarily know. Um, yeah. So as well as George, I've invested in a life coach. So George is my business coach. I've also invested in a life coach because like, George will give me advice. And, you know, I spoke to George last night about just something really random that that happened to me um, that I needed to talk to someone about. Um, but George obviously talks to me about how I can make more money and how my customer journey will be better. Um, I've also invested in someone helping me with my headspace and my, my, just my life. Yeah, so that you've got that drive to do what George needs you to do. So both yeah. equally help you to push forward on the business. Yeah, yeah, and don't get me wrong, like George, you know, like I've got my book in front of me from the mastermind, you know, I write some serious notes. I didn't write this much in school, um, <laughs> but you have to implement them. Like, yeah. Don't don't yeah. sign up to George if you think it's going to happen. Like we, we can say it now and I'm happy to say it. I've doubled my turnover. Brilliant. You've got to yeah. follow through. You've got to say, yeah. right, I'm doing that and then do it and stick to those goals, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So. so 
just, just to add to that, I've again in in the day job, um, you know, I used to go on lots of courses, you know, leadership courses, training courses, um, coaching courses, all these kind of different courses you'd go on. And quite funny because you'd go back to the team, you know, in the office the next day or, you know, after the week, you say, right, team, I'm on a course next week. So I'll be at the office, but I'll be back the following week. And then, like I say, you make all these notes, you come away with all these theories and you, you come away with all this fantastic stuff that in, in the room or in practical and in the demos, feel really good then you get back to the reality of the team and the office and whatever and you try and implement it it's quite funny because the team would always laugh in that in that first say monday morning meeting after i'd been on a call be like oh yeah we definitely know george has been on a course he's you know found all these different words or phrases or getting us <laughs> to try anything, you know this morning and stuff but like you said it's about taking that away and implementing it whether it's one thing two things or ten things that you're going to implement over time yeah. you have to do it and I'm really proud to say that, you know, from some of those courses that I did, my team that I used to work with were the worst. When I first took over that office, were the worst in the whole country. Yeah. At wow. what they did. It and, was a challenge. And me, and I took that office on, that team on, on the basis that it was closer to home. We just had Christo, I wanted to be closer to, you know, Sam and the kids and whatnot. But then within 12 months, I turned that branch that office into the best performing office in the whole of North London. And again, it was through going on courses, you know, people like George, you know, running courses and you know, doing things like that, but then actually implementing them with that team and sticking with it. Cause day one, everyone's going to have their like, ah, oh, doesn't work. Ah, oh, I don't, I don't feel comfortable doing that. And, but you've got to push yourself out of your comfort zone. Right. So it's one thing having a business coach, a life coach or going on a, an online course or whatever, but it really is with the whole sticking with it, trying it. And even if it fails the first time, like calling clients up and being told, sorry, I'm busy, phone me later. Don't take that as, okay, well, that failed. I'm not going to try that again. You've got to keep at it until you see the yeah. results. 100%. I suppose one really good example was um, Instagram and social media. So we spoke a bit about Instagram and obviously George's face is all over his own Instagram. And within the mastermind we were talking about, and I they, they sort of said, um, in in our masterminds, you saw we get a call from Tino, George's um, like right hand man, shall we call him? Um, <laughs> is he listening, George? Um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, and um, what's the, what the key thing you want to get out of, of the meeting this week? And I said, I want to get my face on Instagram, and that's really weird. I will just press the button and you get on Instagram. Right? It's not hard, but I had a psychological block. I couldn't get on Instagram. So with the coaching of George and people like that, and they just, just go do it. Just go do it now. Like, just go do it. So since then, I've, like, my face is all over my Instagram. My kids are all over my Instagram. When I go to a job, they know my kids. You know, my and, and George's daughter, Katrina, have done a live, my daughter, Francesca, have done, like, a live interview, which was the scariest thing we've probably ever done on Instagram, um, because anything could have been said. Um... But like he's helped me push my limits with the five E's um, that no one else could have ever taught me. Well, yeah. someone could have taught me, but you know you have to find the person, right? Yeah. Well, we've done the same with City FM. Um, my husband, as you can tell, is very out there, very outgoing. I'm behind the scenes at the weddings. I'm the wedding coordinator. I make everything function, but you see me running from here, there, everywhere, and that's it. I'm, I'm, not, the on the mic. I'm not in your <laughs> face. I'm, I'm just doing my job where I need to be doing my job. So I'm always behind the scenes, and I'm always the one that fixes everything, but you don't see me because I'm obviously fixing stuff. And then when we did Sooty FM, like yourself, I was so scared. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've got my Facebook and my personal pages to my friends or people that I class as my friends. But I've never really put myself like this, yeah. out there yeah. to anything like this. And there's been days where I've said to him, oh, I don't want to go on or look, look at my hair or, <laughs> you know, like as you would do as a person, you get like really conscious. But actually from doing City FM and like some of these listeners I'd class as like our friends now really close friends like I, I we've grown and now hopefully obviously whatever business I'm sure the city is going to carry on DJ and I will still do my weddings but hopefully bespoke takes off and it 
it's the same with that business as well. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I definitely understand where you're coming from with the whole putting Conscious, yourself yeah. out there. And yeah, especially... And it, was ha- it was having yourself. some... Yeah, and it was having someone... Like, listen, your mates will always take the mic. They always will. Like, that's, that's always. their job, right? Um, always. But it was having someone to say... Like, what did you think of that? And you know, and George is very honest. He, he like, he's, I, I hope not, but he's never lied to me, and I've never found out yet. But um, <laughs> he was like, he was like, just do it like this, or just do it like that. And you know, within his programs and and um, things he offers, there's training sessions. So we had, I might get his name wrong here, Chris Taylor. Is that right, George? Yeah, never. And yeah. he's like, he's not an Instagram sensation, but I think he is. And some of the tips this guy gave us about Instagram. Well, like out of this world and i'm sure he charges big dollar to do his training courses um we got to do it because we're a part of george's group yeah i get yeah. to call it favors like other speakers that come in and do presentations we've got one tomorrow actually a linkedin expert who's become a friend of mine over the years since 2011. i mean this lady is incredible i mean she gets paid 20 grand a day by hewlett packard to go and train their sales team on how to generate ongoing consistent um inquiries on linkedin and she's coming to do a specific training for all of my guys uh, people in my community and obviously luke and all the other guys get access to that but um at the end of the day it's just it's going back to the things that we were talking about earlier about like what added value can can you bring like so rather than say to to the guys like you know reduce prices or do things for free what extra value can i bring i'll bring in these other experts that have got expertise that i don't have and then i owe them a favor so or yeah. I pay them, you know, out of my own pocket to get these guys to come in um, yeah. and do this extra stuff. But it's it's really great to see. Look, uh, we've been talking about social proof and um, testimonials and getting people out there and you know evidence of your work and getting people to you know I can sit here all day and say, look, guys, I'm great. Come and use me. But if yeah. Luke's it, it's a different sort of vibe. So I mean, I've got a few questions for Luke just to help people get to a place where. There is a lot of help and support out there, and and not from me, that from me, but from loads of other people. There's the, the important thing is going back to connections as well. You've got to find someone that you connect with, that you vibe with, that someone that you've got like you know relatability with, you know, and um, and that way you, you've they've got your ear and you've got their attention and vice versa. So, like with Luke, like what what was it that made you feel like you needed help in the first place, though, Luke? I just that it was the fact like I'm not the most academic person in the world, so. Like, like I said originally, you don't learn this at school. You don't learn how to run a business. Um, and when you start running a business, you find out there's many parts to it. For me, yeah. before I started running a business, it was just about making money, which is great. And I still just want to make money. But there's so many parts to that to make the money. And then you flip it and it's the work-life balance. Yeah. So you yeah. run, you run, you run. You want to make as much money in the world. And I had a meeting with George yesterday, funny enough, and I... I think he picked up on it and I said it, you know, I've just, I feel a little bit burnt out. It's March. Um, and we sort of worked out a strategy, looked in the diary and I've now blocked off Tuesday mornings to spend, to spend time at home. Yeah. I would have never done that by myself. I would have just kept running. Yeah, and that's this one. And that's the thing, right? So it doesn't matter what job you do, whether it's you're employed by a company, small or big, or you run your own business, there is this automatic um, mind or thought process that the more you work, the more you make. But that's actually yeah. not the case. And also, especially now given lockdown, and there'll be millions of people that have been working from home that maybe have never done it before, or they've maybe done it one or two days a week, but obviously now they've been doing it for 10, 11 months nonstop or whatever, that automatically, the psychological, there's something that happens in the brain that you think, well, I'm working at home, I'm going to go make a coffee, but it's almost like that's a punishment. Because you've stepped away from the laptop to make a coffee, you feel like you've got to work an extra half an hour to make up for that. Whereas actually, in real life, in the office, you probably have two or three coffees or breaks just to catch yeah. a out of the coffee machine. But it's that psychological that, oh, I'm at home. So every time I stop to talk to my wife or my kids or, you know, go to the toilet, I'm away from my laptop, my boss is going to know that I'm not working and I need to work harder. And it's that whole thing of actually, no, you need, going back to well-being, you need to take those breaks away from the laptop or from the phone calls, make time for your family, your kids, whatever, mm-hmm. your partner, that really gives you that kind of energy to then go 
you know, for the rest of that half day. So let's say you're taking Tuesday mornings off, bet you feel really energised and Tuesday afternoon you're ready to bang it out yes. and get phones yeah. or whatever it is. Um, I just want to... Sorry, George. I'm, sorry, sorry. I'm gonna... That's right. No, I was just on that point. I was going to say like two absolutely critical things from working from home as an employee or a business owner. Like if you can find your way of doing number one, producing results for either your business if you're a business owner or your employer if you're employed, and link that with your mental health and what makes you happy and what keeps you sane. Like those two things have to be absolutely critical. And you know, if yeah. you turn around to your boss and say, "Listen, like." As long as we get the results that we need on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, like how happy are you? Because I might take a few extra breaks. I might knock off early, but the results are going to be there. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, like I'm an employer. So if, if my employee comes to me and says, listen, um, like as long as we if – I, if I hit those targets that we've got for this week by Wednesday, can I have half day off on Friday? Yeah. Like – I'd be an idiot. Like if I like if they smash the targets, like I want I keep saying to my guy, like, I want you to ask for a, a pay rise every three months. But just yeah. to be clear, like yeah. you better come correct when you do it. Like you've got to, the results have got to be there. Not I'm gonna do that in the future, right? So yeah. look, how can I make you even more successful? Like put people in a position to be successful and like mental health, like me and Luke have had countless conversations about mental health. And like look, I'll be honest with you, like this isn't really the time in the context of what we're talking about, but like I've suffered with my own health, mental health issues and, you know, and, and sometimes I feel like the door's always a little bit open still. And um, and January was a really shit year for me, a fit shit month for me. Um, my head was in the wrong place, but I've got a lot of focus on mental health. Um, yeah. So yeah. as long as we can keep each other going and keep each other pumped up and connecting with people and like just checking in on people, like Luke does something brilliant, um, which is when he asks you if you're all right, he asks you again. So like if we're on the phone, he's like, how you doing? You're right. And I'm like, yeah, he goes, you sure? And I'm like, yeah, man. Just yeah. that little thing, like people. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm on the conversation to mention it again. Yeah. It's just, are you sure you're all right? Sort of yeah. just start checking. Yeah. Yeah, well, this thing. thing we um, again, knowing obviously how tough last year was for everybody in various you know ways, um, both financially and work wise and family wise. Obviously, people losing people through coronavirus, all the rest of it. You know, we set this talked to her up for this specific reason um the first one we did was about coping with lockdown and homeschooling the second one was on well-being just because we know you know Sooty fm gives us that release to actually talk to other people other than just our kids and each other and talk about certain things like this and well-being so yeah the well-being like i say it's not the context of tonight's show and we're kind of digressing a little bit but oh. it's it kind of goes with business because if you're not in the right mindset and also you know the physical well-being side of things as well if you don't look after yourself physically and mentally then how do you push, prepare, and drive your business? Yeah, so I mean, it is all kind of linked. I don't know about other people, but for myself, speaking about myself, if I'm not in the right frame of mind, you ain't getting me to do anything. Whether you're paying me or not, it's I've got to be in a clear frame of mind to be able to do what I need to do. And it might be that actually I'm preparing for a wedding on Saturday but Friday I've slept all day or I've just sat on the sofa and I've just watched crap on TV, to be honest. But And then George just says to me, but you're not prepared. And I say, yeah, I am. I'm actually in my head. I'm mentally. prepared. I'm mentally prepared for it. And it's not just work wise. This is home life too. I literally last week, like I said at the beginning of the show, I had a few bad days. So I only trained twice, but instead of, like being annoyed at myself for training twice, I sat there and thought, well, I've done twice. That's good. That's a good achievement. I'm, I achieved twice in a bad week. And as long as you keep trying to keep the positives going, slowly, slowly, it'll be, I've had a rough week, but actually I've trained seven days. Or actually I've had a rough week, but I've done all my targets for work. I've got everything I needed to do. And it is, it, well-being is such an important thing. And especially now given lockdown with children at home and you know i'm pretty sure your wives are just like me and they'll go yeah, but when when's my break when do i get a break are you going to clean <laughs> like i clean all day can you not just put your bowl in the sink you know and i can't hear you the, 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 i can't hear you <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it's not because we're, we're moaning or, you know, because he, he tries to help me and then I get annoyed that he's helped me, to be fair. I'm like, why are you cleaning? Right, so, I'm going to interrupt you for a second because we've got a couple of go comments on. um, and one of them is actually directed at you, so that's why I'm interrupting you oh, now. Right. So Paula wants to know, what is the company called? Does she organise events? I thought I heard that. So okay. I'll let you well, give your... Spiel. My okay. my personal company is Bespoke Gift Queen, and I make personalised items and um, sweet treats and and loads of different things. I can personalise whatever you like. So, yeah, that is my company. But our company together, which is technically his company because I'm his employee, um, is DJ City Limited, and I work as a coordinator. So yes, I can organise events. You name it, I can get it for you, um, especially in London. I have so many contacts, more in London than I do in Derby. I'm working on the Midlands now and trying to build my contacts up here. But, yes, I can organise anything you need, really, birthdays, christenings, weddings, anything you like. But, yeah, mostly I focus on the weddings because yeah. that's where... People um, need more help with the Yeah, planning, they need but, more help with. But, yeah. yeah, nothing's too big or too small for me. So I have yeah. done... I've got a question. Go on, go ahead. Can you do water bottles like this and stuff as well? Because I want one of them. Yeah, yeah. I did. I um, I did. I'll show you this one. This is for Kai, my son. Um, it's just the Arsenal badge for him. It's a hot and cold flask. Um, but I did a company logo on these as well so i can do these i do those plastic ones you've got i, I anything you want i can do really yeah t-shirts it's just i've got to source kind of the products that you want and then i make them so. nice and then on the sweet treats what other stuff do you do aside from sweets what other stuff personalized stuff do you do so i as you guys have got kids i'm every time it comes to my kid's birthday I get to the birthday party bag part and I'm like, right, what can I give them? No one else would have given them, yeah? And that is my my thing as a mum. I, I'm a big, um, I like my kids' parties to sort of then walk away and go, wow, wow, that was great. More for my children because if the, if the other children have a great time, then you know, my children get that feedback. Oh, wow, your party was amazing, you know, and stuff like that. So I... I do, for example, my son Christophe, um, in between the lockdowns, managed to squeeze in a birthday party. So he had a football party. Now, what do you give 10 football kids, 15 football kids? What can you give them that's going to blow their mind, really? So we did sweet, we did um, water bottles, personalised water bottles with their names on. So they have a football water bottle. And uh, we gave away a football as well. But obviously, it depends on people's budgets. So if you say to me, right, per child, I've got five pounds, then I can create a, a party bag for five pounds. Or if you've got a budget of, say, 50 pounds, then I can work with that. So I, I work to people's budgets. I never want people to uh, feel like they've wasted money, you know. And I try to create things that are different that you wouldn't just see, like my, my son's got a tracksuit with just his initials on, or um, no, just stuff. loads we, of stuff. We've certainly a fan, we've done, you know, we've, we've got a couple of sayings on the show, like tune and oh yes, and a couple of things like that, which we've made into t-shirts, um, you know, not these logo t-shirts, but you know, they've kind of saying, so again, any kind of personalized saying, so anything like that, but I'm, I'm conscious we've still got loads of comments coming through as well. And Paula says, like uh, you before, um can you add a link to your so we'll definitely put a link to everyone's business so george's yeah. details um luke's details yeah, yeah and blondie as and well we'll, we'll go for these questions and i want to just come back to luke um because i want luke to because uh, he's got some invaluable advice as well for when it comes to buying kitchens um so i'm going to come back to that i'll put you on the spot in a bit uh luke so get ready <laughs> yeah. uh, what, what questions have we got well, to be honest i would have loved to have known luke a few like oh, last a year, ago. year. But because when we moved here, I didn't know anyone up here and we did our kitchen. And to be honest, yes, I love my kitchen. It's beautiful. But I would never use that company again. There's so many things wrong with it that I wish I'd known someone like yourself. And obviously you say Sheffield. Sheffield's like an hour away from us. So you could, you probably could have done my kitchen and then I would have been really completely happy <laughs> with it. the work. 
kind of so gutted we we'll, didn't um, know him. We'll or George will challenge you in a second, Luke. Just conscious yeah. of couple of have been there for a while. So um, yeah. Georgina Dupree says, small steps and a little positivity. I think great friends and family supporting you will help you. Just that's a little bit of this. You know, and it's about you know having that somebody whether it's friends family or both to like I say bounce ideas off or get their feedback honest feedback about ideas of business and whatever else and then to what you were saying george about the you know being a manager stuff i wish my manager knew how hard we worked at my job but it's unfortunate some managers don't see you for your worth and that's my manager i feel my loyalty to the company is blinded by managers that can't see your worth so i have self-taught myself I know I'm a hard worker and help anyone and it shows through my work. And yeah, I mean, there are managers out there that unfortunately just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and don't appreciate, but I'm well, sure. Well, some are on a power trip as well. And I think it's just knowing yeah. how to challenge, not challenge them, but kind of learn how to deal with certain people. So if you have managers that don't appreciate you, I'm not saying don't give your all because you should always give your all, no matter what it is. Even if it's just going to the school run, you give your all, in my opinion. But um, as for, um, you know, showing your loyalty, Look, you can try different ways to show them, but if they're still the way they are, then you kind of just got to accept that that's the company you work for and the managers you work for, that they're on that kind of power trip. Because I remember I had one manager before and uh, I couldn't stand her. But, you know, we I still did my job and I'm, I'm proud of what I achieved. Nice. Cool. Um, right, we Anything? There du, 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 is du. More. There's a couple, but that's fine. Let's go back to uh, let's go back to Luke. I don't know how, I why Luke uh, come off. I don't, I don't know, know what happened. Still, 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 still there. I think I pressed something. I have called come through. Uh, no problem. So, George, yeah, do you want to go ahead? With, uh, your yeah, challenging okay, question. So I'm gonna get ready, Luke, because I'm gonna put you on the spot. But um, for the purpose of anyone watching, look, Luke's Luke's been a client of ours since uh, July last year. Um, he's a top, top, top guy. And, and the big thing that stands out is um, that he he implements immediately, he takes action, and he goes above and beyond for his clients, which is why I wanted to bring him on sort of like uh, with me as well. And and like he's quite modest. He's doubled his turnover in seven months. But we're not talking like 10 grand to 20 grand. We're talking multi-six figure increase. Like he's very, very humble and very modest. I just wanted to like, you know, um, just express that but i've got two things for you mate the first one is give people that are watching here today like an insight into how you compare with your kitchen business compared to like the other big name brands when it comes to like quality of product when it comes to like customer service when it comes to price when it comes to aftercare especially on the back of what sam just mentioned as well but how do you compare yeah. Yeah, yeah, I suppose I say it to everyone at the beginning of a project. Um, anyone can make your kitchen look good. Um, but for me, it's practicality over aesthetics. You know, we send a little questionnaire out before we do your kitchen, which not a lot of companies do, um, obviously to find out your name, etc., and the, the important stuff. Um, but there's a few key questions. One is your budget. And people automatically think when you ask someone's budget, well, I'm going to charge you that money that's not the case because there's certain elements of a kitchen that cost more money so we need to be realistic and i also need to know that i can help you if you say you've only got two grand and you've got this seven meter run i, I can't help like it's impossible um and then the second thing is about the relationship with the client so it is not just buy your kitchen see you later so whether we fit it or not we're like holding your hand the whole way um and for our for my problem it's probably a bit too much and probably a bit like you were saying with like your dj clients um like i'm there all the time like my phone i'm talking to some people on a sunday morning a sunday evening but a kitchen i think george has touched on this before on his own instagram things you know refurbs refurbs divorces deaths I like the most stressful things you ever go through in your life. Yeah. Um, so I am part of that stressful experience. Um, so I want to be there and I've got a little self motto in, in my head. Like I couldn't care about your kitchen, which when you say that somewhere, I think what? I care about the, your friend's kitchen. And like, what do you mean? And I'm like, cause I want you to tell your friend how good I was. 
so then I get another kitchen. So it's this repetitive business. And I ingrain that in the two lads that work with me. Like, of course, give everyone, you know, 100% attention and, you know, show them all the love and do everything we need to do. But I don't really care. Just get it done. But follow our steps because we want their friends to buy from us as well. Yeah, absolutely. So you're going into every potential transaction with the mindset of how can I add so much value that these guys are going to be raving about me and talking about me to yeah, yeah. Uh, our friends. And like exactly with you guys, like, you know, touch wood, like getting married is a once in a lifetime situation. So it's on you guys as wedding suppliers to guide us through that journey of getting married and like what to look out for and how to avoid mistakes and how to maybe maximize our budgets and, you know, all those kind of different things because you guys have seen it a hundred or a thousand times. And the same with, um, with, with you, uh, Luke, when it comes to like kitchens and refurbs. And, and one thing that I love about what you do is when you ask that question there, you've kind of like done it a bit of a disservice. One of the things that um, for, for the purpose of the people listening, one of the things that Luke does really, really well is, he asks really great questions in that questionnaire to find out like the lifestyle of the people that are going to be using the kitchen so that you can create the kitchen of your dreams. If you're a wine drinker, we can incorporate, you know, a mini like wine cupboard in there. If you're, you know, if you've got kids, you know, and, and you want to like um, create an environment in the kitchen that they can like get parts of their own, um, breakfast together as part of you know when they become five six seven eight nine you know so they're independent so you have certain things placed in a way that it creates lifestyle you know and yeah. um and, so uh, one thing uh, you, I want to go on uh, look, sorry George, just on that and a lot of companies that without trying to discredit anyone it's just about here and now you know like I've got a lady today she's talking about she wants mixed colors like that's great that's very on trend but will you like it in five years time like that's not a question I should be asking as a salesman as a designer to a degree um but i did because yeah because you're, cause you're yeah. honest and you're gonna ask her that and then she's gonna sit there and think hang on but in five years time yeah i don't really want to change yeah. my kit so that's a great question to do mm. i mean for example when we did our kitchen i've got mixed colors on mine so um but one of the things it was literally the last co like confirmation and he goes to me, you've got no drawers next to the oven. Why have you got no drawers next to the oven? Where are you going to put your utensils? They put them on the other side of the kitchen. And actually now, by putting them drawers in, I, every time I open them drawers, I think, why did I not think of that? Because I'm just in there looking at all the pretty stuff. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. He looked at the practical sides. Yeah. And but you, you expect the experts to do but, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But you guys a business saying that your client guarantee she will go away and think okay right i've got to think about this logically and she will use you not only for this kitchen but the next kitchen yeah yeah yeah. 100%. i mean I, I i've got kids so i don't want a kitchen that's going to break in five minutes so you know like you said no style it is actually really clever that's a really clever thing and not many companies do that looks and I'll be honest, like in a selfish way, it's to make my life easier as well. Yeah. You know, and that's been implemented by George and, you know, because you can just go around the houses with people. Like it's a big decision. And if I'm going to be 100% honest, there's a lot of time wasters out there as well. Um, yeah. People think it costs a couple hundred quid to change the kitchen. It doesn't cost that. Um, it costs money. Like, and it costs decent money to have a decent job. <laughs> We've got the same problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If we exactly. just press buttons or we do nothing and we stand there and look pretty all day, yeah. I, I would <laughs> yeah. man, you press play on the CD. What do you need? Like, no, uh, talking about, I just pre mix it all. I just stand there. I don't actually mix on the on the way there. I stand there for fifteen hours doing nothing. <laughs> the worst is when I've had the the like people screaming because like events or even like kitchens, things go wrong. Nothing's ever going perfect. And if if you believe that. An event can go completely perfect. You're losing the plot because something will always go wrong. So, for example, my wedding day, they lost my baby's nappy bag. Now, of all things to lose, that's the most thing. It had his bottles. It had his nappies. I needed that more than anything, you know, more than the fancy table settings. So all this stuff, it, it's really important to focus on the little things. And like you, Luke, with your kitchens, you're focusing on the little details Five years time are you going to be happy with the colors it, is this i don't know hot tap going to make a difference to your life it, yeah, yeah. 
it it's really important so and it's a big saying of george's as well is it's about finding the solution you know like it is like it's i've had people call me you know i had a lady last week call me the kitchen's been done just before christmas there's a big chip in her work top so i'm like oh no i called my work top guys up i'm like what's going on he's like look this could be like really bad it could be an air bubble blah 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 so i'm like look you need to go now like, whatever it costs if you want me to pay you you need to go now and we need to see it as he's got there he's got out the the, the van and the, the, the lady's husband's um said oh yeah she's hit the work top of a pan <laughs> we never knew that but because we yeah. reacted quickly we went there they didn't know we were coming and i wasn't trying to catch anyone out we were genuinely concerned there was an issue we wanted yeah. to fix it but we found out the issue and he's look he's filled it with a bit of resin polished up no one knows there's a problem um, yeah but, but it's still that problem that service, right you you dealt with it quickly you didn't just say oh well you know okay well we're a bit busy this week we'll try and, yeah. and that's a lot of companies regardless of the industry once they've yeah the business and they've finished it off sold or installed the kitchen or done whatever it is you phone up a week later or a month later they're like oh well sorry like well, there's a call out charge to come and check yeah. it i paid you x amount of thousands of pounds yeah. and your experts just come and have a look is it something i can fix is it have i done something wrong but like, i paid a lot of money for this but you know it's that aftercare service that george mentioned earlier as well it's it's all about the service you know without service there's you know Yes, you'll get business, but you won't. Eventually, it will dry up because eventually your, your bad service will catch up with you. And yeah, and, that, and it's always a, a daunting thing, you know, owning up to, to mistakes. Um, because, like, I'm human, right? We measure walls. Um, you know, we've got to say measure twice, cut once. But, like, you do make mistakes. But it's just like, there's a fire, jump on it, put it out, carry on. Like, the longer you, you go on about it and think about it, it just takes up more energy that you don't need to burn. Yep, yep. Then it's how you, again in any business how you solve a complaint right yeah, yeah. that that you know again builds that customer rapport because if you do if they come to you dissatisfied with something and you deal with the problem you face it head on admit to it if you've made a mistake and say do you know what i'm sorry i'll fix it whether you offer something as a compensation or as a goodwill gesture whatever that depends on your business I suppose but it's the way you deal with the complaint they may then say do you know what your aftercare was so good i would still use you because yeah it's human you know nature you made an error but you fixed it you dealt with it whereas if you create a whole load of headache to fix it but you still fix it but you give them so much headache oh they'd never yeah. use it again and, like, give it, well, and give and, and most importantly you know as a business owner you give yourself a headache yeah exactly <laughs> like the customers are great but you give yourself a headache, you bring it home this, you know it, it's just never end it's a spiral of dominoes that just yeah, yeah. One, one thing goes down they all go down <laughs> so um again in conscious of time we've you know we've kind of exceeded our two hour not that we have a time limit but um there are some more comments George, any more questions or anything else you had um, yeah I just um i wanted to say to luke like for everyone watching for the benefit of everyone watching what three to five tips can you give people in terms of like if you're looking to buy a kitchen like follow these three to five things like to make sure that you you know do the right thing choose the right kitchen like manage the process properly what you know what, what would you say yeah yeah look, i'll run through them quick because i'm conscious of time and for everyone um look practicality like all kitchens will look good new when they're in so like the key thing is practicality to how you live you know not how to how your friends live or anything else it's how to how you live um second would be style in terms of you know we are humans and we get bored potentially quite easily so yeah having a leery color is is lovely now but will it be lovely if i be um will it be lovely if you come down in the morning with a sore head you know there's them them um, <laughs> options to think about number three um it's not all about price of course it is like i've not found that customer that's got endless pot of gold yet i'm still looking um <laughs> but you pay for what you get in everything um like do your checks but you pay for what you get um and then we've got two more so you've got to like the person you're buying from and you've got to build that trust so regardless whether they work on the big companies out on the higher road or you know a smaller ish business like mine you've got to build that rapport and if they're if you've got a little inkling that they're not coming back to you um then you, they're answering your questions for yourself and yeah. number five would be um yeah i don't know there's only four 
there's probably loads, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> That's it. Brilliant. Well um, done. Go yeah, I'm going to go to a couple of comments. So hang on a minute. You've jumped this one. So yeah. Nick says he would replace the word service with experience. Service to Nick means uh, sorry, is a product that you provide. Luke makes kitchens. That's a service. How Luke delivers a service or well, the experience is important. I expect the kitchen to be provided as ordered. It's about how you provide the service that makes a difference. So lots of products or service in there. And I, I, I get it. Um, and again, I suppose this is where I will kind of counter, and obviously, gents, feel free to put your view on it, but I view the, the kitchen as the product. That's the, at the ultimately, that's what I'm buying. Whether I'm buying, you know, a mug, whether I'm buying a T-shirt, whether I'm buying a kitchen, I'm buying something tangible. That is a product. The service is how I am served during that transaction. From day one, when I pick up the phone to say, hi, I've got your number from so-and-so, or I saw your advert in on Instagram or I saw your light or whatever it might be, my your service that you provide me is how you interact with me on the phone, text messages, email, whatever, throughout that process from day one through to reviewing this, the options in kitchens, colors, design, this, that, whatever, you know, you coming around to measure up. All of that is the service. The product is a thing that you supply at the end, which is the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, I expect to get what I've paid for, you know, the picture that I've seen in your virtual kitchen, but the service is how you treated me on that journey. Mm. Yeah, and oh, would you guys the agree? At the end, it, it was, it was the, it's the customer journey. Um, you know, to break it down very quickly, I've got in my office on the wall, I think it's six customer steps. That's your kitchen journey, six steps. For me, um, for my guys, that's 24 steps without someone dropping a grenade in that and changing it. Um, yeah. So it's, it's just about, look, and you, you can't be, whatever you sell and whatever you do, you treat people how you want to be treated. Um, yeah. So, you know, like you guys have been talking about weddings and things. So I'm planning my wedding next year. Um, you know, the amount of suppliers that, like, and we've unfortunately sorted DJs and things, but um, but the amount of suppliers that never got back to us, like you're yeah. crossed off the list. That's it. See, like, yeah. you, know, you don't get chance. You know, there's, there's someone um, that, I was ready to pay a deposit to. I, like, yeah. I had the money. I, all I wanted was the email, and yeah. they never sent it. And, yeah. and I messaged, and I messaged, and I don't oh, forget it. Yeah. That's cool. No problem. Like I gave you a chance because you know someone I know. Yeah, but well, there's only so um, many things. You the truth is that's why I got into weddings was because he was DJing and I was going alongside him um and helping and i kept seeing so many things go wrong and then when i planned our wedding or when we planned our wedding I, the, the service that i got from some of the suppliers no names mentioned but i i wouldn't use them now i wouldn't recommend them now either but i wouldn't tarnish them that's not what i'm about i'm uh, there it's it's yeah. between me and him we know but the truth is is that i sat there as a bride and I didn't want my bride to ever feel the way I felt, yeah. regardless of what it is, whether it's I've lost a nappy bag. For example, one of my brides, a, a buggy got left in the cab and the cab wanted to charge us to bring the buggy back. And I was like, no, listen, you've done the drop off. And I spent an hour on the phone arguing with the cab firm and I got the buggy back and I didn't pay for it. They shouldn't have these stresses on their wedding day. Yeah. And my job, a big part of my job is, I take away all those stresses so that you do not, you and your family walk away and go, yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah. Cause that's what you want. You pay all that money mm. to say that you don't yeah. want to worry about, exactly. you know, anything at all. And I think well, it's very easy for any product or anything you do for, if you do a good job, people will forget you. If you just yeah. do a good yeah. job, people will forget you, you know, it's, yeah, it's exactly. natural, but it's just leaving that, that lasting impression. Yeah. Right. yeah of course well look djs aside you said you've sorted one out and i'm not about taking business mm -hmm. from other you know, fellow djs but you know if but you're you... after price no problem perfect if you need any help we're here so Listen, you can message I've got to me. be honest you're talking yeah, I... to the wrong person <laughs> yeah well tell us <laughs> we're, we're here for anything yeah. you recommendations know. of suppliers again that's what it's all about right like tonight it's about kind of putting people in front of people that we know and recommend so again just a little yeah, if you yeah, need, yeah. 
you need the experts to give you some advice on on things to do or not to do yeah. on your wedding day. I'll, um, I'll send to. it to the boss. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. Perfect. Well, um, really appreciate it. Um, George, obviously, the same kind of question to you, really, that you asked Luke, you know, for the purpose of everyone listening in, you know, to kind of round up the last two, almost two and a half hours, what would you like, you know, if you had to sum up everything we've covered today, the one or two or three things that you want everyone to take away from this, you know, all the businesses out there listening, you've got kind of, you know, you've got a couple of minutes. How would you sum up? What would you want people to take away from today's show? Four things. Number one, I would say clarity. Like be clear on what you want, what you need to achieve, what kind of life you want. Just like being being clear because when you're clear, then it's clearer for everyone else to understand like the value that you add, like who you help, all that kind of stuff. So number one, be clear. Number two is connect with people. We've spoken about that a few times, is connections. Uh, number three would be consistency. Like nothing worth having in life when it's relationships with your husband or wife or with your mates or getting clients or building a business. Nothing in nothing in life is worth having um, without consistency. Like you've got to have consistency in there. And number four is cash flow. It's all about cash flow, man. Because we can sit here and talk about you know the the incredible um, achievements and results that Luke's got, you know, with or without working with us. But if it was just turnover and he hadn't had the money in the bank then what good is it? If it was loads of profit, but he still hasn't been paid yet, what good is it? You know, yeah. so it's all about cash flow, getting money in because like nothing is, is is done until the money's in your account. And even then, like we were just talking about customer experience, even then there might be some issues. You might have to, you know, refunds could come into play, play or whatever. But those yeah. four things, you know, like being clear, complete clarity, um, connections, consistency, and cash flow. You can't go wrong. Fantastic. Well, we've heard about the uh, we, we've heard about the five E's. We've heard about the four C's just there. Um, you know, loads of takeaway. And obviously, S's. you know, the four S's or five S's earlier as well. Structure, stability. Well, you've I've got to start all over again. <laughs> That's it. Don't Number two. Don't start him off. <laughs> um, but listen, obviously, the show's you know it's live on. It's it's available on. YouTube, it's available on Facebook. So again, George, Luke, everyone listening, please do share it. There might be lots of people that missed it tonight, but it will be available to watch, you know, um, after tonight's show. So please do spread the word. But um, don't go anywhere just yet. I've Luke, got, got one comment. There's actually hang on. Oh, Sorry, okay. there, there's there's two. So Nick says we know where you live, Luke. Um, <laughs> Australia. <laughs> so I want to know how he knows yeah, where it, you live. He's but... in Australia, but he said, but seriously, congrats on your business. Um, growth story so again well done to you and again yeah, you know, Nick, thanks, mate. For, uh, um, you know, for George for helping you with that but yeah this is the point that this Sam is a really up. good question um Mike said hi Luke with your VR kitchens do you ask your clients about their health like if they have an example like epilepsy and so forth because wait, actually wait. that's something that I personally wouldn't have thought to ask but actually they can't have yeah, those flashing lights, lights and, and stuff, stuff. No, no. so, so Look, we're, we're no medical professionals. We explain the process of putting virtual reality goggles on, you know, it makes its motion. Um, but, you know, we would direct you to go speak to your doctor or whatever and see what impact it has on you. I'm not going to say you can't wear this. That's not my job. My job is to say, go check what's right for you. Like, I'll be totally honest. Um, we had a guy put it on. Um, and he felt a little bit dizzy afterwards. Um, his wife was in hysterics, um, <laughs> absolute hysterics. And then he was in hysterics after. Um, I've got a client who's a brain surgeon, um, a really high brain surgeon, um, like works in the Royal Free and all the great schools in London. He was in my office on Friday. His child was drawing on my desk with a permanent marker, which was great. And, <laughs> and he walked into a wall. <laughs> um so yeah. look, he's one of the most qualified men i've ever met in my life but so yeah look and, and that's a bit of joking he, he laughed it it wasn't nothing serious you know um but to answer your question michael we can only explain the product and how it works um in terms of putting it on we have to direct you to get your doctors to check like it's a great question michael yeah, and do you know what? And so, oh, before on. you just change the subject, that permanent marker, spray hairspray on it, it'll come off. 
Yeah, yeah, no, sift. If you use sift on stone worktops, it's got a bit of a grain in it. Um, so it takes it out. Or um, no one, no one. Yeah, um, hairspray is brilliant. You just spray yeah. it on and see it pull yeah, up. There's another one. Sam, so, does it look like we've got hairspray in the house? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I have hairspray in my cleaning cupboard <laughs> just for that reason because my children have this obsession with drawing on leather sofas or drawing on – and. I don't know where they cut, they got it from because they never did this as babies. But ever since they've grown up a little bit, they're like, oh, let's just draw on this and annoy mm -hmm. mummy. So, you know, you've, yeah. I've learned my way. But, yeah, I just thought I'd give you that little tip, that the cleaning tip. But I think Mike's question was brilliant. Yeah. yeah and yeah. you know what? I actually read that as not necessarily just wearing the, the VR for, you know, health conditions. I was actually thinking more so about implementing the design of the kitchen and factoring people's... Um, you know, um, lights, and lights you know, um, the lights and the design. Obviously, um, naturally, I suppose if you've got a disabled client, you're going to want things low reach and stuff. But, yeah, so we yeah. do that for the disabled clients. We have, they're called rise and fall kitchens where they can have like um electronic switch where it lowers the work top down and lowers it can go back up for the other members of their family. Um, look, if I'm being honest, they're very rare. Um, in terms, of, I don't do a lot. But they're there, they're, they're, they're available if people need them. But it goes back to the practicality. It yeah. has to suit you and your family's needs, you know, and like re very, very quickly, because I know we run on, but when we do people's islands, you need, you need to have a sufficient space around your island between 900 and a metre. Um, people are like, no, 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 forget it. And I'm just like, look, I hate to say this, but worst case scenario, something happens, you yeah. can never get to your garden. Yeah. Um, so it's just about, it's just giving up people the honest opinion, you know, it's worst case scenario, but... With with COVID, the worst case is definitely happening. That's it. Well, definitely. honesty is key, especially with something like your job. I mean, you were saying about a damaged worktop earlier, but I've still got damaged worktops and the company won't do anything about it. That's yeah. Like, for an example, I've got one one cabinet that's got a tiny crack in it. You can't even notice it, I, but I notice it. It, yeah, it yeah. bugs me when I clean it. Yeah. No one can notice it, but it's the tiniest crack. But it yeah. bothers me. So, just on the on the point of the uh, the permanent marker, Nick says just buy a new table. <laughs> that might work. Um, and uh, Mike says, Sp Sam, spray some Windex. On it. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Honestly, I will get it out. Like, I just call the stone guys to help take it out for me. But, um... <laughs> so there you go. I was just more in shock. <laughs> That's it. Um, so guys, really, really appreciate your time tonight. I know I kind of said, we, or I actually said to George, it might only take an hour tonight, so two and a half hours. Um, I really, really appreciate your time tonight. Um, obviously, we'll get your details. We'll put them on the on the link on the show as well. We'll add them in as well so people can find your pages and your businesses and obviously reach out to you if they want kitchens or obviously to reach out to George if they uh, any, want any more information about business consultancy or any help with their businesses um really really appreciate your time so thank you gents uh, yeah Lovely. we do we nice one do great meeting you. you yeah you're very welcome and luke we'll, we will definitely catch up george will we will speak, speak soon um feel free to jump off i'm just going to kind of wrap up the show with the listeners and stuff but feel free to uh, jump off um nice really one, appreciate your time Take thanks care. guys thanks thank luke thank you for the opportunity, guys. really appreciate you thank you you're welcome Bye. thanks mate bye bye no confusions, just solutions. Just solutions. Just solutions. Oh, that's that in my brain. Don't worry. Take care, mate. Right, so there you go, guys and girls. Thank you very much. We hope you've enjoyed the show. We hope you've actually taken something away from tonight. You know, whether you've got a brand new business, whether you've got a, a business been trading a long time, whether you're thinking about starting up your own business, or even if you are working, you know, out there some other things that we've taken out today from the show well, i've definitely taken out in terms of just level of service to give to clients so whether you don't have your own business and you just work for a company you interact with customers on a daily basis hopefully you've taken something away from the show that you can implement into your daily work lifestyle as well but like you guys have seen i'm sure they'd be happy to help if you message either george luke or obviously us we're always happy to help and you know we're here to support you and we hope you found it quite useful um tonight's show and yep. topic yep definitely we thought we'd do something a little bit different obviously done a few uh, music shows and some like reminiscing and taking it back to the 
the good old days. Um, and we thought we'd touch on something there as well. Now we're coming out of lockdown, lots of businesses, you know, trying to generate leads. Again, my Facebook and my social media is full of businesses, especially in the wedding industry, trying to remind people that, you know, they're open for business as well. So we thought tonight's show would be, again, quite appropriate time-wise as well for, for those businesses looking to come out of lockdown and say re, re-energize themselves. So hopefully they've been watching and and taken something from the show. We, as you can see on the on the screen at the moment, if there are any topics you want us to discuss on Suit FM, just get in touch. You've seen the types of things we've spoken about. We are open to all kinds of discussions. So please get in touch if there's anything you want us to cover. It doesn't matter what country you're in, whether it's relevant, as long as we can make you know a half decent show out of it or spend some time having a, a good conversation, chit chat. You know, we are we are open to all topics. So get in touch, send us a message. Um, as Jules said earlier as well, it's about asking for praise. So I know I've asked you all this before. I'm going to ask you again. If you are first time listeners to Suit FM, thank you for joining us. And we hope you've enjoyed the show tonight. If you're one of our regulars and you watch most shows, thank you very much again for your continued support. Um but we'd like to tell a few more people about Sooty FM and who we are and what we do. So please feel free to leave us a review on the Facebook page. Feel free to share our shows as well, you know, when we're live or even in the posts leading up to the show. Just um, let us know what you think. We're coming up to a year. We're counting down to a year. So in two weeks' time, we are celebrating one year of Sooty FM. So it would be great to start building some of your, again, your feedbacks uh, from the last year and what you've loved the most about Sooty FM and what you'd like to maybe see more or less of as we uh, as we continue through 2021. There we go. So Nick says, overtime party now? <laughs> Question mark. Uh, Nick's missing the party. I'm sorry, Nick. We will definitely be going live on Friday and we will all have a party for That's you. It. Um, only joking, it was insightful. So good. Hope you've managed to take something away. Penny says, thanks, guys. A very informative show. Learned a lot. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Mr. Sooty, I hope you enjoyed my gift to you. Yes, mate. Thank you very much. Um, Listen to the CD. Very, very good. Thank you. Anyone wants a... Uh, the latest in Becky Goss CD, check out Mike's Facebook and bombard him with messages. <laughs> there you go. There's your, you there's take your them. plug, mate. You take them. Uh, enjoy, enjoy, the, enjoy, enjoy it. <laughs> Angie says, thanks, you both. Amazing show. Night, night, Sam and George. And Christine says, well, being and healthy eating. That's exactly That's it. That's it. And as we say every week on the show, obviously, it wouldn't be Sooty FM if we didn't finish off with our sort of catchphrase of stay safe. Stay strong, stay positive. Where you're, wherever you are in the world, whatever you're doing, make sure you're staying safe, stay strong, stay positive, and hopefully it won't be that long before we can finally meet some of you face to face and actually get to meet the City FM family for real. Yeah, I'll be throwing the big event. <laughs> don't you worry. That's it. Stay tuned for more uh, on that as well. But I think for now, I think it's time we uh, went and see the kids are very, very, very quiet. So. I'm actually intrigued to see what kind of disaster is waiting for us <laughs> in the house upstairs. So oh, from from us here at City FM, thank you again. Two and a half hours together on a Tuesday night. It's not bad. It's but good. from us here at City FM, good night. God bless. Stay safe. Stay strong. Stay positive. And we will see you again on Friday. See you Friday, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye.